The chapter starts and it is a beautiful day on City A. It is a blue star dragon country. We see our MC with his hands in his pocket. Oh gosh, it's another cool protagonist, let's go. They then begin to notice something as everybody looks at the sky. They see a huge light and a lot of clouds. And they mentioned, oh my gosh, aliens are actually attacking the blue star. This must be the end of the world. We see a huge gush of the sort of white, I don't know if that's a cloud or something. But anyway, we see something start to form in front of our MC. He says, what the heck is this? And of course, he wonders if everybody can see the screen in front of them. And yes, he begins to go through it and he mentions, there's no country this advanced. And so we see notification saying, opening soon, the mayhem world. We then see the people around them. And of course, they are really excited by this as well, but some are scared. And we get a system notification, opening soon, the world of slaughter, heaven mayhem, as you see a lot of mysterious and demonic beasts around the floor. We even see one huge crocodile here, and we find out that the able-bodied people, aged 15 to 50, from all over the world will be teleported into the heaven mayhem. And so, this is a place where beasts are rampant, and yes, this is going to be hard to survive, and we see somebody standing on top of the mountain of corpses, and we find out that obviously, you can die here at any time. But of course, you can also gain eternal life. We then see these rays of light and we see that some people have been selected and they're in this sort of tube and they're trying to get out. But of course, our MC's like, wait, what the heck? Aliens really are invading the blue star? And he wonders, what the heck is going on? We see that this is blue star's only chance for self-redemption. And of course, the alien wishes them luck. They then arrive, of course, at village 911 or 911, and we find out that each village has an initial population of 1,000 as our MC falls in the sky, and we see little huts here, and we even see a flying creature. He falls down into his cabin, and we mentions that to be able to appear here out of thin air, it seems that what that strange thing said about slaying the world certainly is true. He mentions from now on the Tian Dao screen can be accessed, and so this is pretty much like a game. We then see his stats right here, his name is Qin Feng, he is 22, level 1, unawakened, and he has no skills. He folds his arms and ponders, 89828 battle rating is 1 star, what's up with this level? And we see that our boy is definitely confused. He then clicks on something because of course he wanted to go to the public chat. And everybody is saying we've all been kidnapped, please help me. And everybody is distraught and it seems like her mc though is very calm and composed he's definitely going to be super op we see this buff guy talking about how he is a boxing fan and he likes to train so that's why his strength is really 18 which is pretty high our mc then says hmm the highest energy index from what people have revealed so far is 18 points which is less than half of what i have i don't know what this energy index is for but of course this is really to his advantage as you see a notification here saying you will now awaken your innate talent based on your four dimensional index and her mc's like wait a second what the heck is an innate talent and that your innate talents are separated into nine ranks of course this is like any you know manhwa it's f e d c b a s s s s s s and yeah we all want to be an SSS class. The system notifies him saying, would you like to awaken your talent? And of course, our MC clicks yes. He is then transported into a world with a lot of floating orbs or something, and he wonders what all they are for. Of course, one even tries to hit him, but he dodges. And he says a powerful talent must be the most special ball of light, and so he needs to find it. He then gets pushed back by a ball, of course, and we see, congratulations on awakening your SSS rank talent, endless extraction. Of course, our MC is kind of tired and yeah, he's pretty much exhausted, but we find out that this ability can activate extraction on all targets and get unexpected effects. We then see a big notification here in the sky saying, this newbie village talent awakening is completed. 787 people have awakened F rank, 194 E rank, two people C rank or higher talent. And our MC is actually in the 2% of people, or actually just the two people, and he's even an SSS class, and yeah, our MC definitely is OP. We then see Lucian, and he mentions that he has awakened a C rank talent, magnetic control, and everybody mentions how this is super cool. But our MC is just looking down to the ground and saying, Interesting. If I reveal that exaggerated SSS rank talent, of course, he's going to be targeted by all of his foes. And so, this is his biggest reliance in trump card, and he must not expose it. And so we see the other characters in the story, you know, the, the side characters, and of course, in 10 seconds, the test 
will begin. And we mentioned that those who fail to meet the standard will be utterly eliminated. And oh gosh, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Our MC then brings out a sword and he mentions attack power of level 2. Let's give it a swing. He then launches a bit of attacks and he says, Really, this is not bad. After swinging it 2-3 to three times, he feels like he could easily kill a bull with it. He mentions, Let's try my innate talent on this sword. And of course, he uses the extraction ability. We find out that of course it was successful. And so now his sword has become transformed into a fine steel sword, which is attack power plus 5 and grade 1 item. Oh my gosh, our MC is about to be OP. He then looks at the blade and wants to use the effect once again. And he uses it, but uh, nothing happened. Because of course the target quality is too low and the extraction limit has been reached. He then says, yeah, there will be limits. And so he slices on the roof or at the door. And oh my gosh, it really even breaks a piece of it. He then hears people outside and he says, wow, they finally decided to go out of the cabin. He walks out with a sword behind him. And our boy really is just too cool. We see a two-headed flying pterodactyl dinosaur right here. And of course, this is Village 911. The people then mention, if you fail to reach level 10, you'll be eliminated. And what horrible is this kind of world? And so the system is forcing us to go out and kill monsters. Everybody says, I awakened an E-rank talent, I awakened an F-rank talent. And they're all really scared. We then see a huge portal though. And he wonders, really? Has anyone gone out to explore yet? But our MC sweats saying this should be the exit of the Novus Village, out of which lies a world of killing and bloodshed. And this is a huge portal. But I don't know about you guys, but I would be definitely excited to just walk in there. Our MC, and of course somebody else notices a huge explosion behind him. And this is Wang Qian. And this is a guy with one star combat power. They then say, what is your talent? And he gets all flustered and definitely changes his demeanor. He mentions, I'm a D rank. My talent is called Power Frenzy. And it can triple his strength, guys. And his strength previously was 18. So now, of course, it is 54. I, I think... 18 times 3 is 54. Anyway, our MC mentions that tripling the strength, huh? He remembers that of course his strength was 18, and so now his strength is 54, so he can smash a boulder with one punch. He then chuckles as he looks in the air. Ha 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 ha, I'm definitely the strongest. And yeah, he says all the hard work in the past definitely paid off. He does mention though, that he envies the people with C-level talents, and he wonders who was the other person. Of course, it seems like this guy might not be as innocent as he pretends to be. He then raises his hand and he says, I'm going to go out of the village to give you a head start and see how strong the beasts are out there. And everybody cheers saying, Brother Wong is really great. The people left mention, all brawn and no brains, huh? He should not be the first one to take the lead because of course, he's probably guaranteed survival out there. But as he's walking in this dark forest, we see a huge bunny rabbit like something that comes out of a vending machine or a claw machine and our boy begins to sweat. We find out that the rookie Wang Xiang was killed by a level 1 beast. Oh my gosh guys. This is why you should never be cocky. Our boy just got killed by a level 1 beast despite having a pretty good ability. It notifies everybody that the battle power of level 1 beasts are 3 stars. Level 2 beasts are 4 stars and level 3 are 5 stars and so on. Everybody falls into panic. But our MC mentions that if Wang Xiang was killed by the weakest level 1 beast in less than 5 minutes, this difficulty of survival is way harder in our world. But our MC mentions if a 3 star beast faces 4 1 star humans, who will win and who will lose? Everybody says we can't just die here, we have to kill monsters and upgrade or we'll die for sure. And people begin to say, I'm still young, I don't want to die, but come on bro. Just go in there, like you're gonna die eventually, and yeah, try to be the hero of this manhwa. People begin to talk about their talents, and he says, some dude with a red cardigan on, everybody draw your weapons and stay on guard, and our MC is right there, and somebody approaches him with a sword. He asks if our MC wants to join the team, but he says no, like an absolute Sigma male. Of course, he says as he grips his sword, 15 minutes have passed since the first team went in, and it's about time. He says it's time for me to grind some levels and let's go, our boy's about to be the next Song Jin Woo. He then enters this dark forest and he says so this is how it looks like huh? He begins to walk around and he says he mentions that he sort of gets the primitive sense from the surroundings and I can definitely see why and he gets an image of um, you know a dinosaur about to pounce on him at any moment but just at that second he says that he can smell something very disgusting. We then see it is a body on the ground and yes it is Wang Qing. But then he goes back and he mentions let's see if this is working. 
and he uses his extraction on the player and wow he has obtained the d-rank talent power frenzy guys this boy can steal other people's abilities this is absolutely op as long as they're dead though um uh, but that's kind of harsh mode. Anyway, let's go to the story. He says that Power Frenzy, how huh, nice. He really did manage to get it. He says although his strength is 8, it is now 24. And so this is the correct use of his triple S rank talent. And he says with enough time, he'll be able to possess hundreds if not tens of thousands of innate talents. And he clenches his fist saying, the feeling of getting strong is really exhilarating. And yeah, I have to agree. He then says as he also looks at his sword, he uses extraction once again, and of course, it works successfully. We then see there is a dead ferocious beast, and it is a rank 1 bloodtooth rabbit that killed Wang Qiang. He wonders who killed it though, and he says it probably died from a backstab after being surrounded. He then says, hmm, I can even gain attributes this way, right? And with the two strength points he just gained, his strength is that of an average adult. He then says, as he's really happy, if I encounter more similar monsters, my strength points would go up to 30. And so he can be so quick to suppress even the power of these stronger people. He says, how many times can I extract? And we see he uses it again, endless extraction, and it has failed. The reason why is because those under the level of 20 can only be distracted once and you've already reached the limit and it's the same with the novice sword. He then says interesting, so that group of people must have killed a number of ferocious beasts along the way and if you can follow their trail, you can probably find more corpses. We get a notification saying newbie Li Yui has been killed by a level giant rodent, a level 1 giant rodent and oh gosh if I had to die that's definitely not the way. He says that human beasts and of course human and beasts are different but a level 1 beast is too weak so they do not have any innate talent and only have their physique going to them. And so as he climbs up this tree, he says I'm not really sure which way Li Yui's team have gone but logically, of course, accidents are more likely to happen at a path with the least amount of people and Li Yui's group probably took this route. We get a notification that Zhu Cheng has died by a rodent giant and a lot of people are dying. He then says do you really want to go? And so our MC jumps down and he lands on the ground like he's Spider-Man and he begins to make his way through these high grass. He says, this really is a dangerous world because one wrong step and you could definitely just die. He starts to smell the blood and we see a dead person right here and this is probably Zhu Cheng. And he says the rodent must be close as he sees the other corpse. He then says what the heck as he seems like he has spotted something very scary. We then see it is a level 1 giant rodent and of course it is on the ground and it seems to be injured and he says killing it will be easier now. 5 meters, 4 meters, 3, 2, 1 meters and he uses power frenzy on the rodent and of course it seems like your MC got wrecked but nope. Of course he then goes behind him in a flash and he's so quick and he says an animal will always be an animal because they aren't too smart. He then uses his attack on the beast and oh my gosh he stabs it right there brutally and it lets out a roar as our MC punches it one last time. His soul literally leaves his body, this is a pretty cute image, and he says who knew that sneaking on a severely damaged giant rodent could be this dangerous, and so he should definitely be more cautious. He looks at the rib of the rodent though, and he gets super scared. We see you successfully killed the level 1 rodent and gained 30 energy points, and we see it in his hand here, and he mentions that he does feel warm, as though his fatigue has left. He then checks his stats, and after killing the giant rodent, his level 1 status at 0 out of 100 has become level 30 out of 100. And as he pulls his blade out of the rodent's stomach, he says this is a great start, and that is definitely not bad to get 30 points to get to level 2 soon. He uses extraction on it, he gains 2 agility stats, and now his agility is at 11, and so this is the part where he's going to go and find stronger beasts. We then see he uses extraction and he obtains the F rank talent, enhanced smelling sense from the dead person, and he wipes his nose and he says this talent may be trash for others, but it is extremely useful for him. We then see it is another guy there and he grabs off his clothes and he says furthermore with it I can smell the wild beasts who are far away and so he can definitely avoid danger. He puts the two swords together and he uses endless extraction and it was actually successful and he has extracted the rust and residue from his novice sword and your novice sword is now a steel sword. He then puts it around him and our boy looks definitely cool and he closes his eyes as he activates his sense of smell. 
He then see, of course, a lot of things coming towards him and it seems to be colored purple. He says, yeah, it smells like, you know, it wants, makes him want to vomit because he can smell almost everything around him. He then focuses then and he says that light fragrance is a smell of mud, the smell of flowers, and he's trying to trace down people or monsters. It really just doesn't matter. He says something is nearby and I really wonder what it is. The chapter starts and we see the student kid or at least wearing a student uniform and he is running from this level one rodent and it is attacking ferociously at him. And we hear the other two people yell out now. They then quarter the rodent and jump up and they are going to slice the rodent. And we see you have successfully killed a level one rodent and they have gained 30 energy points. They are very successful and he says though our group was kind of unlucky to encounter two of them. So they lost some of their men. They then begin to slice it up. And our MC says he doesn't want to get in trouble with them. He then uses his ability speed enhancement and he goes super fast running. And we see a whole vortex has started. We find out that for more than three hours while others were working hard to kill the beasts, he wandered around to understand the situation of this novice plane. He says, these are the level one beasts in this place. The giant rodent, the rabbit, the prayer gray wolf, and the berserk boar, and even the highly venomous nine ring snake. That sounds spooky. He says that this is the fourth berserk boar he has extracted, but unfortunately it actually failed. He then goes to somebody else's body and he mentions that a total of seven deaths have been announced by the Tian Dao over the past hours, but he can only find this one corpse in front of him. And compared to the attribute points of wild beasts, human talents are far more difficult to obtain. And so he has now obtained the rank vision enhancement, and that's not so bad having vision and smell enhancement. We see he is still 30 out of 100 for some reason, but we see his combat power has reached level 2, and he's pretty sure he'll be able to solo a level 1 beast. We then see a purple fog behind him, and he says this smells like the stench of a highly venomous 9 ring snake. He then says he also smells something else, and yes, it is the same fragrance he smelled earlier. It seems like it is a flower. It seems that the snake is protecting it because it is extraordinary. And he says this is definitely one of the strongest level 1 beasts. And so, the only level 1 beast that can provide the energy attribute points is the serpent. He says what a good harvest and he has one of his katanas in his hand. But then the snake notices him as the snake is on top of a tree branch. It then launches at him very quickly and he even breaks the tree our MC was hiding behind. And he wonders, could it be that it is so sluggish because it had just eaten its prey and is currently digesting it? And so our MC says, we need to take care of this carefully. He mentions that he can't even pierce through the scales because it's too hard. But behind him, he notices something. It then attacks him and our boy gets set flying with rocks in the air and he's about to get eaten. But we see he uses power frenzy and in the air he stabs, the oh my gosh, this is a pretty cool panel. Mid air guys, he stabs the venom's throat and his mouth or something and then he slices it up like Zoro and he's about to cook a meal. 40 energy points in hand and he just needs to kill one more level 1 beast to advance to level 2. He says if it wasn't for the bulging belly of this venomous 9 ring snake, of course he wouldn't have been able to kill it so easily because its movements would be way faster. We then see inside oh my gosh it was actually a human he then says as he looks at the corpse in this world mayhem of course anyone can die and the only difference is how they die and he begins to extract the corpse and we find out that he has obtained the same f rank talent for the second time vision enhancement and it seems like his vision enhancement has enhanced by 20 times and he also got night vision he then says it seems like of course these talents stack up on top of each other and he says the Eye of True Sight is my first skill. He then looks at, of course, this flower that the snake was protecting, and he finds out that this is the Red Viper Fruit. It is a tier 1 spiritual fruit, and it is able to strengthen physique after consumption. And it also gives you poison resistance, which I think is pretty good. He then has something in his hand, and he says with this skill, I'll be identifying every single thing that is unknown. And so he begins to eat on something, and he says, wow, wow, I won't overlook this next time. We find out that he has obtained the Viper Fruit, he obtains 8 points of Physique Attribute, and yes, his Poison Resistance has increased by 100. We then see it is a flower here and it seems to be the only one across the valley or whatever he is in. And he says that that's a lot of points. And so this really is a good harvest. 
He then kneels down and of course to go to the flower or the herb because he doesn't like wasting things. And he begins to use endless instruction. He then uses it and it seems like he has obtained the essence of the spiritual herb. And consuming it will give him two points of physique attribute. He says he knew that a spirit herb was capable of bringing the red viper fruit could not be worthless. And so this is the same points that he would get from a wild beast. He then eats it like it is a gumball and we see he is so close and he has also reached the two star peak of the combat level. And he smiles like he is satisfied saying he can even try to fight three to four level one beasts on his own now. He mentions that he'll extract one more poisonous nine ring snake and then he will leave this novice valley. Just at that second though, we see rocks come after him and we see that the snake is get getting ready to get revenge. But then, he mentions that there are other people on it as we see them right here fighting the snake and there seems to be two of them on the snake and four people on the ground and he stabs a sword and he says I didn't expect to run into him here and it seems like he might know somebody. Yes, he remembers this is Lei Yu, and his innate talent is lightning control, which is only a D rank, but that's kind of ironic. I would expect that to be like an A rank or something. Anyway, one of the ladies, one of the archers, asks if he's alright, and he says, Don't worry about me, finish it off while it doesn't have mobility. Or MC says, I haven't tried using the Eye of True Sight to scan a living wild beast, so let's see the information I can get. We find out that it is a level 1, it is a 3 star combat level, it is ferocious, bloodthirsty, and poisonous and the drop rate is 0.1. He wonders what that means, and he says, I guess if I kill 100 of these, the chances of me getting it is like 1 of 1000, so yeah, it's super low. We then see that people get 5 points, some get 3 as a monster is dead, and of course this guy throws down his sword saying, come on dude, I just got one contribution point, are you actually kidding me right now? And he says, Zhao Li, stop complaining, these points distribution is distributed based on of course their contribution. RMC jumps down and they wonder what's up with that guy. And we see the guy from earlier, Lei, begins to heal. He says, I just leveled up. And it seems like he is the first one to reach level 2. RMC then says as he scans, this is my first time seeing a level 2 human. How big is the difference? We then see his stats and he mentions as he ponders looking at it. With those stats and a d rank talent, his overall strength is barely 3 stars as we see a representation right here. And so, if they were to fight, our MC would probably win. And he folds his arm, mentioning he can easily defeat the level 2, even though he's a level 1. Somebody then points, what exactly happened to Chen Jun? And the guy with the bucket hat and glasses mentions, as soon as they saw two snakes, we turned and ran away. But Chen Jun missed a step and fell and got swallowed by the stake. Oh, oh, not the stake, the snake. Oh my gosh, I'm getting hungry, guys. Anyway, Lei then says, as we see the lightning manifest in his hands, let's go. Let's avenge Chen Jun. Our MC mentions it seems like the one in the snake's stomach was her teammate Chen Jun, and they're looking for the snake that he just killed. But right behind him, we see an archer launch something right at him, and oh my gosh, he barely manages to dodge it. And she says, who the heck is there? They say come out, and her MC mentions, don't worry, he is just passing by, and she recognizes him. She says, your name is Chin Feng. He says, how the heck do you know me? She mentions, um, Liu Yu, do you know him? And she says, no, no, I don't but I've seen a candid pic in the chat room before. She says, Chin Feng, why are you all alone in the wild? And she seems to blush. And oh my gosh, if her MC wasn't OP, he would be OP with the amount of risk he is using and he's not even saying a single word. She explains, boss, can Chin Feng join our team? Since we can only survive here by teaming up. And then he says, fine, Chin Feng, show us your attributes and talent. And as long as they aren't bad, I will accept you into our team. He then says, no need for that. I like to do things solo. And oh my gosh, he begins to walk away. And then of course the archer girl is saying to him to wait. But Liu Feng says, no, let's not force him. They then begin to walk towards the other snake. Or, you know, they're not going to fight the snake because it's already dead. But of course, she says in her head, Chin Feng, I know that you've forgotten about me, but please do survive. They then arrive and there seems to be a slaughtered snake. And they see Cheng Jun right in the center. He says that from the blood, he guessing that the snake was killed 15 minutes ago. It was killed by a single cut and he mentions that whoever killed it must be somebody highly skilled, like a lone wolf. And then of course, they wonder if it was Chin Feng. He says he was nearby just now and he fits the criteria of being solo. And we get a notification saying, someone in the novice village has reached level 3. The top 100 leaderboard has been released. And we get a reminder saying that the leaderboard only indicates levels of the people within the village. So it's not people outside of the other villages or in the other villages. Number 1 is Liu Xuan. 
number two is Long Shan, and number three is Wen Hong. Our MC is like, what the heck, I'm only at 47th. He then stretches, saying, after 4 to 5 hours has passed, 8 people have reached level 2, and Lu Xuan has already reached level 3, and so it seems he needs to catch up. The system notifies him that level up reward system for beginners is now available, and the first person to reach level 10 will be given a gold chest that seems like it's Clash Royale. The second one will receive a silver chest, and the third, of course a bronze chest, and our MC smiles as he says, really? A reward system, huh? He then checks on the chests, and we find out that they are of course divided into iron, bronze, silver, gold, dark gold, amethyst, legendary grade, and divine grade. I definitely need the divine grade if I ever had a system. Our MC says, let's go, it's time to grind levels. And so, his aim is the first place. He then uses his speed acceleration as he goes and travels fast to find his next monster. We see it is a wild beast, a silverback wolf, he was an anomaly, but our MC stabs its arm, and then of course he mentions that this wolf is really tough, and it's like trying to slash through steel. But nonetheless, he gets his sword ready, and he says, if I can't even damage this after he activates his innate talent, how am I going to kill it? The beast then says, how dare a measly level 1 human dare to intrude my territory, I will tear you to shreds. But yeah, the one getting torn in shreds is definitely you. We then see the wolf get stabbed in the heart like that and it falls to the ground. And he says, sadly, I'm much stronger than you. Our MC then reaches level 2 and his strength has risen up by 10 points, agility 10, and everything by 10. And he even obtains 5 free attribute points. And we see a yellow sort of orb floating here. And we see the system or the mana flow, the mana of veins, I don't know what this exactly is. But he feels a gush of warm energy flowing in his Dantian, and so all of his injuries recovered. It seems like he also obtained an iron grade chest, and he mentioned a chest popped up as well, huh? It looks like this is my fortune day, or my lucky day, same thing. He says, please give me a rank 2 item, and he opens up the chest and it goes up in the air, and he obtains the grade 2 item, Item Blood Wolf Battle Sword. This is made from titanium, and it is mixed with blood essence, and so he gets attack and wound tearing plus 100%, and oh my gosh, this seems pretty OP. He then holds a sword in his hand, and of course, he says this sword is way too good. We see a bunch of wolves come to attack him, but slice, 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 just like that, he kills all of them, and he says that they aren't on his level. He, of course, he's really impressed, because of course, if he was level 1, this would have never happened. He then walks into the sunset, and he says, I will find the way back, and he is a level 2, 22, or sorry, 220 out of 300, and her boy really has some crazy stats. On the other hand, we see this sort of animal get hit by a lightning circle or something, and it falls to the ground, and it is a rabbit. And yes, it is a level 2 lay from before. We then see him and his groupmates are really happy, but sadly, we see a lot of notifications about newbies getting killed by a wild fangbore, and yeah, fangbore seem pretty OP. We then see their bodies right here, and they're literally being calculated away, and he mentions that a level 1 mutant wild beast killed 4 people at once, so it's absolutely crazy. We see the notification right here, it is a ranking list. Number 1 is Liu Shan still at level 3, Longshan, Wu Hong, Yu Kang, Kui Chin Feng, and of course the rest of the people. They then say, what the heck so fast because Chin Feng has changed to number 5. We then see, Liu Xuan then tells them, let's go and continue hunting, and he completely disregards the fact that our boy is already level 2 and number 5. We see all the beasts our boy is sitting on like he is literally... I don't know what that anime is, but it looks like, you know, I think Deku when he was sitting on top of that garbage when he finished training. But um, yeah, hopefully the fandom, uh, they, they don't find this. Anyway, we then see he receives a notification that says, Brothers, fellow humans, save me. Our team leader Liu has died, and the teammates as well. And oh gosh, this is really sad. Our boy MC, as we see him on the map, he is that in the middle of the 9-11 novice village and of course the boar. And he says if he has to go there, it will probably take 5 minutes. He mentions though, the fang boar is a level 1 mutant wild beast as it gives a wide smirk and a cold one. That means that he's going to get 2-3 to three times the amount of XP if he kills it. We then see the body of Liu on a tree stump, and of course, he then uses Endless Extraction, and he obtains 2 agility points. He wonders why there isn't any innate talent, and it seems that the extraction has failed. We then see he tries it again, and it is successful. He has obtained the F-rank talent, Sense of Smell for the second time, Physical Enhancement, Talent, of course, a Physical Enhancement once more, and of course, it failed to evolve his Sense of Smell, which is kind of confusing him. 
He then says, Whatever, just take what we can and I've obtained physical enhancement talent this time around. He says energy wise, he is an E rank, enhanced vision and F rank strength, enhanced sense of smell, and now also the E rank in a talent physique boost. Our MC is walking along these fields, and he says, Wait a second, this is a dragging tail. He says, Why would a Feng boar be dragging Liu Yu's Chang's corpse? Unless, of course, it wasn't to eat it. He then charges towards a cave with a lot of cold air coming out of it, cold wind, and we see, yes, it is a poisonous 10 ring snake, it isn't a 9 one. And our boy says, A 9 ring snake? No, it's a 10 one. And so he brings out his sword and tries to dodge it, but he barely manages to do so. The snake releases its poison gas, and we see an eyeball right here, and her MC seems to be going down levels. And that's because the poison gas has ruined his vision. We see him crying little purple tears, but of course he slashes his blade in any direction he can, because if not, he will definitely die there. He manages to take down a boar, but one of the rats managed to escape, and oh gosh, no way he dies here. Spoiler, he probably doesn't because um, there's a couple, there's a couple more chapters after this. We then see he said he predicted that the poisonous tenrin snake would come at him from behind, and so he's literally fighting while he is blind. He manages to stab it in his head, and of course, the poisonous snake dies, and he receives a black iron chest, and he says if it wasn't for his innate talent physique boost, he would have been already dead. He rises to level 3, and he gets 10 plus points for all of his attributes, and his eyes even heal, and he begins to laugh saying, I leveled up just in the nick of time. He then says, really, it dropped a black iron chest, and so, it seems like he got something good, but I wonder what it is. He then sees a portal right here, and he goes towards it, and he says with his current strength, he doesn't have to worry about three wild beasts if they were to attack him together. However, the feeling, there is a terrifying existence, and so that's why he's scared if he ever comes into contact with that. We then see he enters another part of the cave, and there seems to be a lot of flowers here which seem to be level 1 and they are all spiritual glass, or grass sorry, and he says what the heck is that? Because of course we see some of the beasts and somebody sitting on a throne of skulls. And he uses true sight on this monster, and the race is human, but he is dead. He is a 6 star battle power, and he is of level 4. He says its skill and talent are indicated with question marks, so that means, of course, his battle power is above 7 stars. We then see the guy with whores, or that demon man, or the previous human, and he then points and says, Lowly level 3 worm from a small world. Since you've come, you might as well stay. And we see all the boars and the rabbits and even the rat go to attack him. Our MC manages to dodge the chains of the attack, and he says, is this really one of his skills? Unfortunately though, he is like Yuvogin from Karapika, or when Karapika killed him, and he gets bound by these chains, and it seems like he can't move. The monster says, these bunch of stupid wild beasts only know how to bring in human corpses, and not living ones. And so, if he doesn't break free, he's literally about to get eaten by this rat. He manages to break free, and he charges away, and he's about to attack the guy on the throne of human skulls and he says human it seems like you underestimated me as our boy is literally kneeling down and the monster mentions he is about to of course take over his body but our mc laughs saying i'll add all my free attribute points to my energy attribute and just as a buy or just as a guy is about to kill him from the fanged boar our mc gets sent flying but he says the energy of this human has gotten stronger our boy managed to block the attack with his sword, and he says let's deal with these two muted beasts first, then he's going to deal with that undead dude. We then see them come after him, but he says, what the heck, they're both dead? And he says our MC, it finally worked, because when he killed the poisonous ten ring snake, he took its venom gland, and yeah, our MC really is witty. This is an hour before guys, he took the venom gland from the snake, and it seems like he used it. And so now, he's found out that you can't move from where you are. And that's why he didn't even leave his throne. He says impossible, and the undead says, you must have used some dirty trick. He tries to slash him, but our MC absolutely wrecks this thing, and he gets 210 XP, and he also gets the title of a judge, which is really, really interesting. And we get a reminder saying, the judge is the one that is tasked to eliminate evil beings that try to define heaven's law. And only 1 in 10 million are chosen. And we see the stats right here. He literally gains 20 points for all his attributes. And he says, is the evil being referring to the dry corpse that I've just killed? No wonder when he used true sight, it indicated that it is extremely evil. Our boy is really happy and we see, 
He gets a notification of a sealed skill. You obtain the necessary talent to fuse it into the skill. Obtained a tier 3 skill, Beast Taming. He then looks back at the monster, and of course, he tries to use his ability. But we see, you do not fulfill the requirements to activate. First, you need to awaken rank DNA talent. Strength mental with the skill while consuming the Beast Taming will allow him to activate the skill. And of course, the second notification is that you have to awaken rank C innate talent and the connection of the six senses in order to do so. And our MC just says, yeah, yeah, whatever, I'll get this done really quick. He then begins to go through his bag and of course, he says, taming pill. I wonder if the dry corpse would have any pills or recipes in it. He's then looking, an eyeball of a serpent, a secret pink apron of the skeleton king, hold up, and a knee bone of his beloved. Yeah, that skeleton guy is weird. And he says, really, as he kicks away the bag, this guy really is just a weirdo. He then uses his, of course, extraction skill, and he gets the talent Mind Enhancement. He gets 3 Strength Attribute Points and 3 Agility Points, and our boy is right here and he is using his Mind Enhancement. He says the skill is being fused to him, and yes guys, he has obtained a Tier 3 Beast Taming skill, and he also obtained a Level 1 Dragon Bloodfruit, Bone Marrow Wood, and yes, a Hard Meditating Grass. He then says with his ring on his finger, sadly once he has a beast taming pill, he will be able to directly tame wild beasts and not just a bunch of these miscellaneous items. The system then says congratulations because he obtains flame control and again extreme speed boost and we see on his finger, oh my gosh it is literally on fire. He then uses it a bit more and he literally gets burned to a crisp, but I guess he turns into Luffy and he's cooking a big piece of meat. We then see somebody come in inside the same cave as well, and he says, Everyone, let me tell you guys some good news. He says, I finally got my ninth spot and everybody is praising him. But our MC just says, I've been traveling non-stop and it's time to recover some stamina. And yeah, he begins to eat on his yummy big meat. Oh, oh, hold on. Anyway, we then see his stamina recover so fast. And the guys, the other people mentioned, really, so eating cooked meat will allow our stamina to quickly recover, huh? And so, let's go boys, it seems like they are going to eat well. Notification from the system pops up saying, All newbies, all you need to do is eat cooked food and drink warm water to recover stamina. And eating cold food won't work, and the trading channel has been activated. And so I'm guessing they can all trade now. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie, who would want to eat cold meat? Probably only fish, but even that, I like it all cooked. People then say, I don't have a fire attribute, how am I going to eat cooked food? He, somebody else says, who has flame control, please give me some fire. And one of the girls just says this is kind of useful. Our MC says, I wonder if I can sell this cooked meat. And yes, he begins to add it, and everybody is about to give him money. We then see, somebody tries to use the ability to send a wild corpse over to Chin Fang, and it teleports away. And so they say, oh, we have a wild beast here, let's go and trade with him. Extraction is successful and he obtained 2 physique attribute points. Another one extraction and he gains 2 energy points. As we see all the monsters right here. <laughs> it's right here on the ground guys and we see an absolutely huge piece of meat on the roller. The guy from earlier introduces himself as Luya Yuan and he is both, he says we are both level 3 experts and he's even a rank higher than you. He says can you send me 6 kg of roast meat and I'll remember this favor. And our MC of course says, who the heck do you think you are? He says everybody, the roasted meat is limited. First come, first serve. And yeah, everybody is going to try and get some. We then see selling roasted meat, selling roasted meat, because this guy also is selling some meat as well. He says 50 kg of roasted meat for tier 1 equipment. Hey, are you really missing out on sleep? Our MC says, let's try and do something else. He says, tier 1 equipment, strength bracelet traded with your tier 1 refined steel sword. And let's go, he managed to exchange for a tier 1 equipment that quickly. Our boy then wears the bracelet, sorry it was not a ring, and he gains 7 strength. And we see a huge explosion come outside, and this seems like a final flash from Vegeta. And oh my gosh guys, it says it is an emergency notification. Novice village number 137 has challenged our MC's village 911, and so they wanted to do it for resources. We see... Notification, the first one who reaches level 5 will win the challenge and gain an additional 50 points in the attribute and a silver chest. And the challenge criteria, yeah, is only pretty much to get to level 5, and our MC just has his arms folded, cause we all know who's going to do this. Our MC then gets really furious and he says, who the heck in village 137 is doing this? How could they do such a cruel thing? 
We then see this sort of vampire looking dude. Oh my gosh, is this even a person? He says, Lady and gentlemen, I am Noble Baron Edward. As from somebody from the Noble Blood Tribe, I am already level 4. And everybody says, oh my gosh, this guy is so powerful. He then smirks and he says, you're too smart. As a Blood Tribe, we're the strongest at night. And so he can solo all level 4 monsters by himself. Our MC says Blood Tribe Vampire, so Blue Star really does have these kind of secret species. Our MC mentions, why would the Tian Dao do that? What is its actual goal? And our boy just stands up while we see all the beautiful juices on this big piece of meat. Our MC mentions it just conflicts between novice villages. And as of now, in the beginning, this would develop into conflicts between countries or even continents. Our MC then clenches his fist. And he says no matter what, the important thing to do is to bet the resources of the two largest novice villages. We then see he travels through the forest in an instant, and in his head he is thinking. It's a good thing that he has enhanced vision, so he can see things clearly as if they were morning because of his night vision. He says this will allow him to travel faster and more precisely to find those active beasts. We are in the level 4 beast hunting grounds and we see a cat right here. It looks pretty cool with blue fur behind its ears. But boom boom boom, in an instant our boy slashes right through him and we see a wolf to his left and he slashes it as well. And that is a golden eyed tiger hybrid. It is level 5 and the battle rank is 8 stars. Our boy MC mentions that's really interesting. He said it jumped out so suddenly but it seems like he smelled it just in time and he wrecked it. As we see he steps over the corpse. He then looks at the paws. And he says it is his first time seeing a half beast and half human. But just at that moment, we see these red and, sorry, these black sort of aura thingies with red around it coming towards our MC. Our MC then smells something. And he says, this familiar smell. He wonders if there are any spiritual grasses nearby. He is then walking to a cave and this is not a good thing. And we see a beautiful red rose here with a purple stem and leaves. And we also see a huge, is that a bear? I don't know, but that guy looks really scary. He says he is in trouble. That is a dragon fruit. And of course, that is a second tier spiritual fruit. But the one guarding it is a level 6 king tier raging bear king, guys. And our boy MC has his sword in his sheath and he's ready to unsheath it. But I don't know if our boy Chin Feng is ready for this. He says a king tier beast with a 60% drop rate. This will definitely not be easy. He then jumps above the monster and the monster looks both ways. And he accidentally sends our MC flying. He says despite being so fast, this dude is super huge, so he doesn't have the time to dodge. But oh my gosh, it seems like this beast has actually three heads and he wasn't looking separately in different directions. And the monster says, I don't have time to waste with you. He says, how about you leave and I'll spare your life. The bear then goes to attack, but our MC manages to slash him. He jumps up in the air, avoiding the attack. He launches his own attack and slash. He manages to kill one of the brothers or one of the heads. Our MC mentions that its neck is a lot harder than he thought, and so he can only slice one off even if he mustered all of his strength. We then see the spirit of a dragon, and yes, the beast has gone berserk. No guys, not the manga. But anyway, I wonder what Guts would think of this. Our MC tries to run away because of course as he jumps in the air, the ground has literally been destroyed by this bear. Our MC swings once more, but of course he can't dodge and the bear is about to bite his face off. But then, he uses flame power and his damage is increased by 10 and he takes out this beast. He then walks up to it, but right behind him, it seems like something has attacked him and the raging bear king has not died yet. But it didn't really matter because like that, boom, the head is cut off. And yes, he has finally defeated this level 6 king tier beast. And yes, he has also gained 2 points and his prestige has gained 6 points. He also gets the treasure chest which is only bronze though which is kind of sad. But at least he has a chance to get a grade 3 item. He says it's still alive even though it cut off his head. Hunting down a level 6 beast king truly was an eye opening experience. Our boy then uses the treasure chest and it seems like he has gained the king's battle armor as well as a bear king's battle armor. Let's go boys, he then wears it. And he says defense increased by 25 along with fire and ice resistance attributes. This is definitely a grade 2 item. He then says, easier to fuse the blood of deities and demons, right? And we then see of course he then get it ranked in his talent, Blood Evolution. We then see something begin to happen in his heart. It says that he feels weak like a ground. And we then hear, the dragon says, let me swallow you or roast you into a delicacy, how humans like it, or a delicacy. I didn't say that right. 
Anyway, he's literally being crushed by this dragon, but our boy just bites into the dragon and this is a hallucination. And the dragon says, I'm a real dragon, do you understand? I can teach you the secrets of the dragon. Butterboy MC doesn't really care, and he manages to successfully eat the dragon blood fruit. He gains 5 power points, 5 agility, and 5 bodily constitution. He also awakens the wisp of the dragon's blood power, which gives him some more strength, and with the help of the dragon blood flute, or fruit, oh my gosh guys, my, my pronunciation isn't the best today. Anyway, he gets 0.1% of his blood, evolved into the dragon's blood. Our boy is now level 4, and he is only 10 points away from level 5. And he says as he's laying down on the trees, looking pretty rested, apparently the people of the dragon nation are descendants of real dragons. And so, of course, this is going to make him way stronger. He wants to take a nap, but right behind him is another monster. And he, but yeah, he's literally just checking out other people's progress. And we then see it is that vampire from before. He says, I am already 520 out of 1200. And once he, of course, gets to level 5 before daybreak, give me all the glory. But yeah guys, yeah, you're not gonna reach that level 5, bro. We get a notification saying, Novus Village number 911, Chin Feng takes the lead in ascending to level 5. And therefore, they have won the betting challenge. And let's go, boys. They are celebrating right here as a lady from before the archer says, he really did it. And what the heck, a huge mountain suddenly appeared in front of him. And they were scared of death because of course, it literally just spawned out of nowhere. They are fighting as they are fighting and we see... All members of Novice Village number 137, all of their resources has been cut in half. And of course, they are looking for Edward the Vampire. And yeah, he is literally just getting attacked now. Our MC still by the tree just stabs that monster behind him. And he smiles saying, Many thanks for offering yourself up to increase my experience level. You then see he obtains a chest. And yeah, our boy really is just too strong. We get a notification saying, Boss Chin Feng. I got a resource betting token. I want to use this token to exchange for one grade 1 exquisite steel blade. Our MC smiles and he says, really now? No matter which way you look at it, this is a trough trade offer he can't affuse, and he says agree. We then see no wonder Gumi wanted to sell it to me. Not only are there limitations on who can use a token, but the punishments received by the user will also multiply. And so he just smiles, because everybody is saying, let's go, Chin Feng really is the boss. And everybody is looking at him right here, and they are really cheering for him. He then sits on the tree once more, and he says, I'm not that thoughtful, nor is it because I'm tired and want to delay time. But oh my gosh, another monster comes to attack him. But just kidding, that monster gets killed, and that was actually a level 6 Dark Knight Owl. And our boy gains 220 energy points, which is kind of crazy. He says strange though as he covers his nose, this is a level 10 beast area, and the heavenly map is supposed to be here. And wow, we see a massive crater fall beneath our boy, and he begins to fall down, but he- Whoa, he just levitates using fire, this is pretty cool. And we see that he senses a strong beast presence that he's never felt before. He then goes to one of the statues and he uses an ability on it. And he says what type of illusion is this? Because he literally spawned in some sort of village. He says heaven is truly fair but cruel. It gives every person a chance to increase their level and gain power. And oh my gosh we see a lot of beeruses or whatever this creature is. We then are introduced to them and they are the soldiers that guard this place. And so breaking into the place will only result in one fate and that is death. And oh my gosh guys these are evil beings and their level is level 15. Our boy says, the no way that these boys are that strong. He says as he brings out his blade, well, guys, I have no idea how to leave this strange place and I can only try fighting them. And we see his blade right here is a Windscar blade. Attack plus 100, attack speed 100%, and armor penetration plus 30, and wood rate 100%. And our boy is ready to get into action, and we see purple aura coming out of his eyes, and I promise you guys this isn't Song Jin Woo. We then see a huge wind slash literally break some buildings, but he manages to dodge it with a fire sword in his hand. And he is literally jumping on the debris floating in the air. He comes down, and we see the monster goes to charge at him with a spear, but of course he says that they only send one because they're looking down on him. He uses a lot of his talents as he goes up in the air while the others are just watching, and we then see as they begin to gossip, on how Big Brother looks like he's struggling a little. They say, don't you see? Big Brother is toying with that human. He's purposely missing, revealing flaws, and of course, luring him in just to crush him. But just at that moment, he disappeared. And oh my gosh, our boy is literally under the foot of Beerus. Uh, I'm just gonna call him Beerus. And he's about to get wrecked. But then we see a spear come straight through his chest. And we see 
Congratulations, you have killed a Hell's Shackle soldier for the first time and gained two prestige points. The rest of the Beeruses are literally shocked, and her MC says, In order to survive, I don't dare to waste a single minute or a second of time. He uses endless distraction, and he gains dark manipulation. And so, he awakens the talent Hellfire, and he has become a level 2 judge. Oh my gosh, and he even manages to get Hell's Jackal Soldier, Dark Seal Fragment. He says, I've trained like hell to learn how to control weapons, from the left, from the right, from above, and it seems this is the technique to kill people indirectly. We see all the other dogs or Beeruses getting super furious, and of course, they're definitely not going to let him off. We see one of them literally right behind him charging up a Rasengan from his mouth. Uh, when did Beerus learn that? But anyway, our MC goes away and manages to dodge it. But the other people begin to walk towards him saying, Well, we haven't encountered humans for such a long time so we got careless. But now, this means we won't die because we're hell soldiers. Our MC doesn't care and he literally charges. And he says, if I can kill you once, I can kill you one, two, three, four, uh, whatever number you guys want, boys. So yeah. They then begin to fight, boom, 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 and then of course we see the sun is rising, and I'm guessing they are weak to the sun. They then say, human, you're very interesting, and if fate wills it, we will meet again. We then a notification saying, the lost village inter interconnects hundreds of thousands of novice villages, and it appears in the dark of night, and it appears, it disappears during daybreak. He then looks at the fragment in his hand, and he says, when I get strong enough, I'll definitely come back to find you. But um, our boy just really can't catch any sort of break. And yeah, right behind him is a centipede. Although it's not as strong as the one from One Punch Man. Welp, he looks at it with his evaluation skill in his eyes. And this is a sand centipede. It is level 12 with a 15 star combat level. He then goes to attack it. And yeah, our boy really is just going to become way too OP after this. We get a notification saying announcement, regional channel connection successful. The novice village 911 is the 47th village to be connected, of course, to the region. The chapter starts and we see a notification saying, Notice, novice village number 446 has activated the betting token. And so, village number 911, of course, has to start the resource betting challenge. It says here that whichever novice village has the first player that ascends to level 8 will win the current round of betting. Our MC then picks on his here like of course he just doesn't really care about this and our boy knows that he is definitely going to be the one to win. Everybody wonders what this is and they say what the heck, boss Chin Feng won, didn't the resource betting challenge just start? Yeah, how the heck is that possible? And our boy Chin Feng is way too OP. We see a guy here with a turban here in the desert. He says, impossible. How could these people from the Dragon Kingdom be so fast? And this guy is definitely so mad that he's going to give away all of their resources. He then lets out a help note saying, Dear allies, number 911 used dirty tricks. And please help us defeat Novice Village 911. We even see a lady floating in the air. It seems like a nun. And they say saintess, I guess that's what she is, I don't know, but I mean, she, obviously guys, she looks like a saintess, if you've read any other manwas. Right, and anyway, she says, why does this guy from the Dragon Kingdom have such a fast ascension speed? Could it also be that he has a grade S talent? And he says, the S grade talent we have was a lord's blessing. So of course, I wonder if he will show love and mercy for his servants. And yeah, he doesn't have an S rank, bro. He has an SSS rank, so yeah, it's gonna be a bit harder. We see a dude, and it seems like he's in the Ice Kingdom, and he says he was so great, he got defeated by a person from the Dragon Kingdom. And these dudes seem like they're straight out of Antarctica. We then see him hauling a huge dragon here. And the old man says, Long ago, I knew some people from the Dragon Kingdom. They are truly powerful, and I really hope we can see them in the open world. And then we go to some sort of Horus village, I don't really sure what this is. Seems like they're actually in a jungle, and he says to his commander, Nami Miyamoto from village number 5 is an A rank, a spatial talent ninja, and he's also the first person to ascend to level 8 from region 1. We then see it is a chat, and we hear, These guys just can't give us dragon people a break, huh? And yeah, our MC just says, Your boss Shin Feng is about to die of a heat stroke here because he's literally taking out this huge bug in the desert. He has this lifted up above his head, and he mentions, I really hope he can pick up a water element, because yeah, if I were you, bro, I mean, I would just like, I would just run away, because if there's anything I don't like, guys, it's the heat of a midsummer day, and imagine being in the desert, that's gonna be really, it's just gonna hurt. Anyway, we then see something come out of a chest. This is a C rank mission token. Activating this token will let the user gain a rank C mission with no time limit. 
But Ramsey says as he is sweating, those who get first and place the novice exam only get a gold treasure, but completing the C rank mission gives a dark gold treasure, so of course he decides to accept it. We get a notification by saying Chin Feng has used a mission token for the first time and he has gained prestige as a reward. We also find out that Novice Village 911 is also congratulated for of course having this activated. I really like that rhyme. Anyways, we now see that the mission is a rank C mission, break 5 elemental seals with no time limit. You need to harvest one king core from each of the 5 elements, which is fire, water, wood, and of course earth, and this is going to be a breeze for MC. They get a mission reminder that also tells them after baking the seal, the villagers of 911 will be entering a bigger space, so this is very beneficial. Our MC then begins to ponder, saying, According to the ascension speed of everybody in the novice village right now, gathering a small group of level 10 fighters will require 5 more days. But then he'll be too late, and so he says the graveyard wasteland is very close to the faraway plains, so he's going to check out the situation. And we see somebody is super scared hiding behind a rock, and I think I have an idea of who this is. She tells herself not to make a move, but it seems like this elephant on his feet finally catches her, and he's about to wreck her. This is a raging mammoth, actually. It is a level 12, and just as he slashes, our MC saves her like he is Killua, and he's super quick. And he says, why are you here alone in a tier 10 beast area? And yes, this is the archer from before. She says they got captured, killed, and eaten. And this is absolutely frightening. And she mentions, I'm begging you, can you please save them? Lage away. They all got captured by these elephant heads. And her MC says, they? The mammoth herd? And oh my gosh, her MC mentions, leave the saving to me. You should go and find a place to rest. He says, our level is too low, so you won't be able to help. She says that they like eating human meat and I can act as bait. And her MC says as he looks back, are you not afraid? And she says to him, please let me be of assistance. And her MC then gives a smile saying, I guess this woman isn't completely useless. We then see his Lei Jue and his gang tied up on a tree. And we see some dancing mermaids guys, don't get any ideas. Anyway, we see of course it is a herd of mammoths and they're celebrating to sacrifice these dudes. And yes, we see somebody approaching them. We see today is our lucky day as we see a bunch of these mammoths killed and their blood on the wall. And oh my gosh, our MC looks down saying, I was just acting as bait. But of course, Tandao even gave me 60 energy points. He tells her to close her eyes because, you know, he's about to do something. But he just extracts them all. And yeah, W for MC. But yeah, definitely this girl. At least she's not like Sakura. <clears throat> My bad. Anyway, guys, let's continue with the story. He says, open your eyes. He says, this is a protective ring that just spawned from the mammoth. And when attacked, it can form a defensive dome around you. She then blushes because she didn't know that he would give her something so precious. And she, of course, says thank you. As they are walking, we then see another mammoth go to charge him. Our MC says, good. The blinding effect from the venomous 10 ring snake's poisonous fluid is still effective against a level 12 raging mammoth. Oh, that was a lot. Anyway, guys, it just means that it's poisoned, or sorry, the mammoth's eyes got poisoned, so it's easier for her MC to kill it. We then see she slices it with her sword when it is on the ground, and he says when the mammoth is on the ground, of course, even a level 4 could kill it easily. We then see a sudden burst of noise, and oh yes, it is a rest of the mammoth herd, and they're definitely furious. Our MC has his arms crossed, guys. Our MC is just a savage. And of course, he says, let's go. New test subjects just appeared. They say, eliminate that human. And they say, no, it's a trap. And they all begin to get sliced. And we see that all of them have literally been extracted. And he has gained 610 points. Yes, that other one starts to charge at him. This is a mammoth guardian. It is level 12 and it is a mutant class. And this one seems a bit stronger than the rest. But nonetheless, our MC imbues lightning energy into his sword. And Gachao, he lifts up or sorry, he just jumps up to the air, dodging the strike. And he slices this monster on his back. And this monster says, despicable human. He says as he rotates his arm like he's just getting warmed up, my body has received the king's blessing, so all of his wounds will regenerate. Our MC then says, I have a question. Does the ability, does the ability have a limit? And he goes back and forth with this monster. And he says the regeneration rate of the small wounds is very fast, so there's no point in countering them. We then see he's literally cut up across his body. He says from the original 5 seconds, it now needs 5 15 seconds. And he says, looks like your king blessing isn't activated anymore. And so our MC uses Hellfire to the Windscar blade that he has, and he launches it at the Mammoth Guardian with a look in his eyes like he is from Blue Lock or something. 
and oh my gosh, he severs his head like it is for the next meal, and yes, he is absolutely OP. The king, I guess, suddenly is suddenly bewildered, and we hear one of his, I guess this is his magician, or the dude that's always like, you know, beside the king, like his right hand man, he says what's wrong, and the king says, a loyal guard has been eliminated. Jin Feng then punches something, and we see this is the dragon elephant bracers, which gives him resistance to the earth element, as well as some body constitution. He punches a tree, and it goes absolutely, well, it just gets destroyed. And of course, the archer says, Shin Feng's mood suddenly started getting bad a few moments ago. What happened? He got mad because, oh gosh, he can't extract the regenerative ability no matter what. And he starts to be confused, but the girl behind him is even more confused, guys. And then a light bulb pops up in his head like a typical, I don't know what this scene is called, but a typical uh, euphoria, no, it's a eureka moment, and she gets even more confused. We then see more Mammoth discussing as they are sitting behind a rock, and she says these elephants are at least 30 of them, and so even if you're strong, you will get hurt. Our MC just been imbues a sword poison or the poison of the snake into his sword. And he says, sorry to disappoint you, but look over there and then look over there. Why is he saying this? He says, have you thought whether or not this is a trap? And yeah, she definitely needs to think higher or think more. I don't know what thinking higher is, but okay. Anyway, we then see them dancing around the fire like they're stupid brats. Sorry, elephants or mammoths. He says, it's all an act to lure us in. She says, what the heck? But he mentions, the higher level the beast, the higher the IQ they have, and it's common for them to be able to plot schemes. And so, it's about to get messy. Our MC says, this is a trap just for me, so it would be a waste if I don't go, and he literally just walks in like an absolute Giga Chad. They then give a round and con or consecutively, I don't even know the words, but at the same time, they give him a look of utter despair and disgust. And yes, they made an entire single or double file line, and he's walking towards the king. He says 67 of wild mammoths and three mammoth guardians. They look to the right, and of course, they get kind of scared. They say, why is his aura so strong? And the king is there with his little snakes. I thought these were mermaids. I don't know what I was saying earlier. But yeah, these are sort of like medusas, like wannabes, or whatever. And they say, or the king says, human, you're finally here. Our MC says, so this is the famous king of the mammoths, right? Very fierce and eye-opening. He is level tw 12, but his combat is 25 stars, which is kind of crazy. And he laughs saying, sure knows this dude, or sorry, this dude sure knows how to sweet talk. And then he gives a look like our boy thinks he's Jogo from JJK saying, you killed 14 of my citizens. Our clan feels very humiliated. So how should I deal with you? And of course, our MC just looks up at this huge dude saying, Welp, it would just be easy to just kill me, so why don't you do that? But he says, you are more useful than the trash that got killed. And I don't get it, this mammoth dude really doesn't care about his own kin. He says, I admire you. And he says, would you want to join me? He mentions, I'll forget all of your crimes. Beasts, medicines, food, woman, I'll give you whatever you want. And our MC says, before I make a decision for all of this, let me ask you a question. He says, what is it? Our MC says, I heard everybody in the alternative world is as strong as a wind, able to deride the clouds and move mountains. And he says, will I be able to do that? He says, alternate world. He says, priest, do you know about this? And this is a right hand man. He says, king, I do not know. And would you say, or I would say that this human expert must be talking about the rumors. One of the lady begins to chuckle saying, move mountains that destroy the world, only the heavens can do that. But then he folds his arm saying, he could neither detect the eye of truth, nor was he aware of the other world. Quite disappointing. King, I thought you knew more. You're stuck in this little world of yours. Our MC then imbues mana into his sword, and the king says, so what's your decision? He then begins to walk up with his sword, saying, I refuse to carry the name of a traitor, unless you win against me. And oh my gosh, I'm really hyped to see how this big mammoth just gets absolutely wrecked going up against our MC. And yeah, let's just say our MC is probably going to win. Anyway, we then see a literal samurai here from Japan. I don't know where he just came from. And we see somebody else or the dude from the turban. He says, Mr. Miyamoto. All right, we really got Miss Musashi Miyamoto in this mom roll, guys. Oh my gosh. He says, I am Amir Khan from 446. He says, is there an emergency? He mentions this dude will become number one in no time. So we need your ability and we will capture this man. 
He says, doesn't matter, they can do whatever they want. And we get an urgent announcement saying, a betting match has been initiated in Novice Village 5, and they are forcing a connection to Novice Village 911. The content of the match pretty much is that the first winner from the two parties will be the victor. And as this is going on, we see the huge Mammoth King swinging his giant scythe of some sorts, it's a dual scythe, towards our MC. We see the impact is absolutely crazy, but our MC jumps above him. And of course, he lets out a double slash again, and our MC is surrounded, so he uses his physical barrier. Nonetheless, our MC gets crashed into a rock, and he coughs out blood, saying the barrier I extracted from the Mammoth is not enough to defend against his own attacks. And the Mammoth King just looks down very cockingly, cockily, saying, You have potential. I will give you one last chance to rethink your choices. Our MC says, as he's literally on the ground kneeling with a sword on his left hand imbued to the ground to keep him up, he says as he guys no way he still has lighting abilities he says if you want me to join that works and you'll leave and i'll do so he says i'll be the king and of course the mammoth king is surrounded by these huge pillars and our mc suddenly gets frightened because he gets sucked into the ground after the mammoth king uses drift sand and oh my gosh our mc is now underneath the ground and he uses terrakinesis oh wait wait it's Terrakinesis, I just realized the pun here. Anyway, this is solidification. Our MC literally is about to get wrecked here, but boom, he jumps into the air and he activates his system and he uses fire and boom, 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 boom. It seems like, of course, it managed to get to him. But nope, he still gets sliced by a huge weapon again. It is his two big sights. And the king says, what move is this? It can't even leave a scratch on me. That's kind of impressive. Our MC gets furious and his eyes turn blue. He said, I'll do it again. Hellfire. And oh my gosh, he just released a Kamehameha. We then see the Mammoth's armor has been destroyed. And yes, he has actually been affected by the Hellfire. We now see one of the scars on his tusk or his arm. And he says, I finally broke through. And his regeneration rate is much lower than the Mammoth Guardians. We then see the Mammoth King gets furious and he yells out, crushing the ground. And we see a huge fist manifest itself above our MC. He launches it down towards our MC, but our MC is carrying it like our boy is Spider-Man or some sort of hero. And he uses sand solidification again. And we get a notification saying that his stamina is too low. The King just looks down at him or looks... Yeah, that's literally what he's doing. He's looking down on him, saying, I admire you. And our MC is about to die. Oh my gosh, he then gets hit, and yes, it seems like the archer girl is just watching, thinking to herself as she literally crumbles down to the ground with her head on her knees. What should I do? I deserve to die, it's all my fault. But then we hear calm down. If you don't calm down, death is the only thing waiting for you, and these were the words of Chin Feng from before. She then says, it seems like I know what to do. She says, fellow comrades, I am Chin Feng's comrade Li Yuan. Chin Feng is currently fighting for the resource betting challenge. And the situation is very dire. She says, somebody please help. And we hear Boss Chin Feng, who are all your supporters. And they all gave Chin Feng a lot of gifts, like healing fruits, and our boy eats one. And oh my gosh, she regains all of his stamina, power, and stamina, and agility. And it seems like her boy is definitely ready to get it, or to give it, another go. The Mammoth King is kind of scared, actually. And our MC says, may I ask? What the heck do you think I'm doing? Oh my gosh, our MC that jumps above him with a blue aura around him like he's using Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan of Goku or Super Saiyan Blue and he slices him. And oh yes guys, wait, wait a second, he didn't even hit the target. And he says, my bad I missed. And of course he uses Hellfire and a hole is right in his heart. Oh my gosh, the people watching are definitely shocked as of course he gains the Earth Elements King's Core, and yeah, I don't know how they're going to survive our MC. We then see he has successfully successfully hunted this level 12 Mammoth, gaining 4,000 energy points, and he has reached level 9. And we see that the resources of Novice Village number 911 are currently multiplying. They say avenge the king, but it seems that it is too late because our MC is ready for round 2 as he slices and wrecks all of these monsters. Our MC is now level 9, he is only 1,200 out of 100,000, this is a lot of XP. But our MC just goes up in the air and slices these mammoths one by one. 
Of course, his mage with a staff says, hide behind your brethren and ambush him when he kills his way over here. But that won't work and we see them attack him, he uses hellfire and they just get burned up like a piece of beef. He then goes towards that magician saying that the shaman is probably commanding the mammoth surd. And so, he's definitely going to get wrecked now. RMC then goes to kill him, but Mammoth steps in front of him, and of course, it dies. And the Mammoth says, go on, attack him. And of course, this magician dude, bro. This is what they always do. He tries to run away, and our MC is kind of shocked by this, but he sends his swords flying, and kaboom, he gains 1700 energy points, and he also receives that chest. He says the ones left now aren't that smart, and he'll finish it with one blow as he uses Hellfire. We then see the Hellfire surrounding our boy's body, and we get notification saying, you successfully hunted down all of these monsters. And everybody is shocked because our MC is an absolutely menacing person and opponent on the field. They then offer him a lot of gifts and stuff. They say, you saved us, but we didn't have anything good, and this is all we have. And then he says, these are all of low grades, but these spirit fruits aren't bad. And of course, we even see a chicken here, and um, it's making out a weird noise. But our MC says, very interesting. This is a super screeching chicken at level 0, but we see the characteristics. It is super noisy, and just one can be compared to a 100. And so our MC takes a chicken. I never expected him to take a chicken on the battlefield, and he walks away. Like our boy really is a protagonist, and yeah, he definitely is. They then say, Boss Chin Feng is worried for us. I'm so touched. He truly is a good guy. We then see the archer girl and she says, Although our time together was short, you're somebody who's destined to become the strongest. And we see a cheesy image here as she says, It's okay, I will be like the hundreds of thousands of other people that look up to you, because us normal people can never catch up to you. And then we hear, our MC says, What should I do with these two Naga? They then say, Lord of our dancers, please. These are alluring Naga, they're a level 10. He says their combat ability is zero and they're so, so weak. He then grabs something and he says, as I thought, it's a plan from the earth. He says, answer my questions and I'll let you go. And yeah, they begin to rattle away and that's kind of funny. And our MC then gets an image of himself as the one who is literally rattling. He says, no matter how I think about it, I don't think weird talents like seductive sexy dances and waste flexibility are necessary for extracting. And yeah, he's like, that's definitely a no. We then see the mammoths around him. He says, I'll turn in the five element mission. After I organize the rewards I got from this battle. He then is kind of surprised because we see it is the chat again saying, those dudes are sore losers and are framing boss Xin Feng for saying that he cheated. And our MC mentions, so the villages that lost the resource betting challenge are all slandering him, huh? And so, he then brings out something in his hand, and he says with a very menacing, and I don't like this look, guys. He says, since it's come to this, then I'll make you guys remember. And oh my gosh, they're definitely going to regret this. We see our MC standing on top of the magic circle. We get a notification saying that this is the 79th time for their village. And so our MC is kind of shocked by the amount restriction. He then clicks on this board and says, doesn't this mean that the brave ones are going to eat a lot and the ones that are cowardly are going to go and starve? He sees his image here and he says, like Edward, Amir Khan, and Miyamoto, these are braves. And so they were the one who activated the bet. He says those who obtains resources are either weak Oh, of course, or they are people who don't dare it because of the worry that they are not the strongest village. He then clicks on the button that says bet world has been activated, and so he needs to change his bet method. We see the bet method is single or camp. The single one pretty much is you have to pick a beginner village and do the resource bet and reward and punishment is normal. For the camp bet though, you can pick many targets as an enemy camp, and so the reward and punishment is high. Our MC gets excited, and he says I was wondering how to face 20 villages, and so his chance has come. Our MC has that literal blue shining eyeball of his with darkness shrouding his upper face, and he says I must teach them a lesson, and of course he picks on the camp one. We then see a lightning come out of the sky, and he notifies everybody that there is a camp bet. Everybody looks in the air, and they start to get nervous, and they say, our village still has a level 1 newbie. If we lose, it won't end with negative points, we might even get eliminated. We then see this rabbit tooth guy as somebody puts his arm over, 
and he says, don't be scared. We have Lord Chin. How can we lose? We then see the blue clamp is number 5, 4, 4, 6, 2, 1, 3, 8, 3, 8, 3, 2, 1, 1, 4, 3, 5, 9, 5, 1, 3, 2, 6, 8, 7, 5, 3, 4, 8, 2, 3, 6, 9. And for the red camp is 9, 1, 1, 3, 4, and 77. Everybody is shocked because, of course, they mentioned, oh my gosh, this is a 3 versus 24. As you see, of course, it was Miyamoto, and one of his subordinates says to him as he is literally just standing there with his sword and his red beautiful armor like an absolute Sigma male, like he is in an edit or something. He says, Sir Miyamoto, there are 12 level 5s, 9 level 5s, and 6 level 2s, and he mentions, because resources has been reduced, everybody's powers is weakened. But Miyamoto says, shut up, if Chin Feng did not cheat, we wouldn't have lost. And Miyamoto is gonna see definitely how strong our boy is. He then puts his hand on his subordinate's shoulder and saying, if I fall, I will incision and suicide, and you are the person whom I trust. And this guy gets all sad. Notification, bet will officially start after 10 minutes, and as you see our MC here just opening chests, and he is literally accepting all these things. He gets a mammoth bracelet, a mammoth bracer, and even a giant power ring. He even has a mammoth belt, and our boy is fully decked out as you see him right here, and it seems like he's a noble from a manhwa. He then clenches his fist, and he says after changing equipment, combat ability has increased quite a lot, and he is level 9 still, he has 23,000 out of 100k which is awesome. But of course, his combat ability is only at 28 which he's kind of disappointed out. But he says nonetheless, let's go challenge the next king rank beast. and so. The mission is to devour gold and queen and it is a level 13 ferocious beast and it's suggested to form a team of 10 or more level 10 members but our MC might not need this. He begins to ponder and he says really is that so? As you see a notification here and it is actually the countdown and he only has 5 hours and 30 minutes left. It's time for him to make some preparations and I'm sure our boy is ready. He then says Ryzen. This is definitely one of the most important things I need, because it is a poison element. He manages to extract it successfully, as you see it right here, and our boy is literally just, I don't know what he's doing, he has his hands in the air, he's trying to absorb it I guess. And it is right here in front of him, and he says, let's go ahead and try mixing snake venom and rice in together, and let's make something stronger. We then see it is an unnamed poison item, but it is literally a purple core with this, I don't know, a green mysterious poison surrounding it, and it is in his hand now fully formed. He says, I wish there was a ferocious beast, which I can try it on. And unfortunately for this ferocious beast, it was passing by. It has very cute eyes, but the body not so much and this is going to be the victim. He says, come here little kitty, but bro, that is a literal tiger or lion, I don't really know at this point. We then see that one drop literally killed a level 10, and our MC says, I truly am a genius. He then looks forward and mentions, it's time to head to the ant gathering mountain and destroy them all. We then see in a valley he's looking down, and there is a bunch of stone at the bottom. And these are actually iron ore, and this is rank 0, one of beginner village base's resource. He says this is a good item, so let's keep them first. However, he notices something. Oh my gosh, it is a huge ant, and it is carrying one of these pieces of iron, and it is going up this tree, and wow, there is a lot of them. It puts it down, and they are literally just called the Devour Metal Worker Ant, level 12, and oh my gosh, guys, their combat ability is 16, and considering there's at least 100 of them, I wonder how our MC is going to deal with this. Alright guys, so the chapter starts as we see this ant just picking up some ores, and then we hear boom boom boom, and it seems like something has attacked them. Yes guys, it is of course our MC, and he scratches his head saying, After extracting gold attribute sense and sand control, stack power doubled, and the attack power as well. And he says, but it actually uses more mental spirit, and yeah, those dudes didn't even fear death, as we see a lot of them dead on the ground. Our MC then extracts it, and we see notification here saying, Hilt, a level 12 metal worker ant, and he gains 8 points. He says, well, if I use poison, it'll be more convenient, but the ants are separated, so of course he can't control that big and wide of an area, and I wonder if our boy's about to get a domain like he is Gojo. Of course, the chapter starts, and he says to the ants, come and attack me, and we see them all getting furious. They then begin to crawl towards him, 
but he begins to use his new poison attack and catch, kaboom, and it falls right over them. They then see, oh my gosh, they just fall like moths to a flame or ants to a fire, whatever it is, and we see a notification saying, your personal points have reached 300 and according to rules, but MC just ignores it and he says if there are rewards, I will definitely get them. He then begins to continue with the fight and we see an ant on fire and this is a mutated general level 13 with a 23 star combat rank. It begins to charge towards him and our MC releases some of his blue aura and it envelops his body and he eliminates the ants coming towards him and he says it seems like they want to split up and attack of course me. He says well I can actually control this close range and kaboom he actually gets shocked though because of course it seems like they got way too near to him. They begin to throw the rocks at him and he says that because long range attack efficiency has become low he has to choose close range combat and I wonder how our MC is just about to do this. We see his leg gets caught up by one of the pincers of the ant and he looks back saying, I see. So the ant crawled up to divert the attention. He gets pretty pissed off and he goes on an absolute fury and he slices them up like our boy is Tanjiro and he even has some of his aura armor that he has equipped. We see they are all literally on him and he says what's up with these ants? They want to bury him as we see like 50 of them on top of him. Pause. Anyway our boy is literally Sinbad and he calls up up a bunch of Barara Saikas or all of these blue flames and oh my gosh they get obliterated. He kills a lot of them and our boy is getting really confident saying open your eyes and look very closely and this is my domain expansion. Okay well he didn't say that but he said this is my special move and he lets out another Kamehameha, Kamehameha however you guys call it and then he goes towards the ant queen. He walks inside of this tree and then of course he uses it and boom it just dies instantly and he reaches 800 personal points and the total points of 911 village is 867. So our boy is literally like he's 99% of this village's points. Anyways he looks back and he sees all the ants that have died and oh my gosh he begins to go in the cave and he says well, this ground smells like chocolate and he see a scent coming out right here. He begins to follow it and he says that it looks like they're prepared for me. And oh my gosh, who is this lady? I'm guessing that this is her hostage. Just kidding, this is the queen ant, I'm guessing. I don't know what this is, but she looks, it's literally a human body with the body of a queen ant. I don't know what's going on, but her MC is about to get attacked from above. But of course, he just slices it in half with ease and he says if he reacted any slower, he definitely would have gotten crippled. Something begins to happen as the lady shouts out and all of the ants give him a look of absolute terror. They begin to, I don't know what it is, is it crawl or just, I don't know, but the ants begin to walk towards him and oh my gosh, if this is real life, I don't know guys, but I, this is probably the worst thing that I wouldn't want to happen to me or like maybe grasshoppers, but that's just really scary. Our MC is literally in the air trying to avoid these attacks, but he's still confident and he says even though these ants can bite through elephants in front of absolute power, he slices them all up and he says these muns are just so weak. He then says as he slices right through them with a very swift and a, I don't know what to call it, is it a swift and smooth attack because he like moved in the way of water like Bruce Lee says be like water or whatever and we see the lady ant or the queen I'm guessing is absolutely rizzed or shocked anyway and of course it seems like all that remains is the ant queen. He then goes for her but she spits out something out of her mouth I don't know what this is and oh my gosh it seems like it's honey it probably isn't honey but anyway our MC dodges it and we see that it actually burned through some of his mana. He says the light ball has strong corrosive formic acid but he says that doesn't matter it's such a pity that you actually ran into me. He then begins to load up his Kamehameha and we see the monster ant he let out one of more of its light ball or honey ball I don't even know what this is at this point and we see their attack go face to face like it is Luffy versus Bullet from the One Piece movie and we see a huge orb or I'm guessing this is the explosion and kaboom we see Anne sent flying but our MC is alive and of course the queen is shocked but he slices her up like it is fruit ninja. But I wouldn't eat an ant, you know. Anyway, we then see the queen squirming, saying, please help me. But her MC just looks at it and says, die along with your species. And she turns golden and we get a notification saying, you have killed the ant queen. You have obtained the mission item, King Core. 
and a silver chest. And oh my gosh, he says so far he has collected two types of core. We then go back. I don't know what the heck is going on here. It seems that Miyamoto literally severed the head of this man bear or something. And this guy, his subordinate, tells him, I've accumulated 62 points. And according to our calculation, our side has 600 in total. He then praises him. And he says, according to this progress, the chance for me to die will be gone. They then begin to laugh. Guys, I don't think that's the best situation. But we hear in another place, boom, boom, boom. Number 5 village has lost a bet, and we see explosions coming from the air. Miyamoto instantly is shocked and he loses his attribute points, and his subordinate says, Miyamoto, I'm crippled, please help me. But Miyamoto is just looking at them, and oh my gosh, does he not care at all. He then falls on his knees as he says, We really lost. And RMC mentions, You guys really didn't give me points, so don't annoy me. And then he just kicks away the ant that he is referring to. He says if you want to take revenge for your ant queen, then you must get stronger. And so they literally leave like they're gonna go on a training arc. W guys, these ants are gonna go on a training arc. And the chapter just continues to roll. And no way, these ants are probably gonna come and bite her MC in the butt in the future. He is then sitting on a rock and he says, oh yeah, I need to go and check all the rewards that I have. And it seems like he has reached 30 and he has obtained the newbie king title. And her MC is very happy saying, I think I've gained not that bad of loot, but still, it is still too little for him. We get a new mission and he is kind of shocked. And oh my gosh guys, he is level 10 and he's 155,000 out of 230,000. Our boy is just way too fast. He clicks on the mission with a notification red ball I'm guessing anyway he reaches level 10 and the next village is a, or the next mission is a future village head and so the reward is a gold chest he says the 5 seal C rank mission is a dark gold chest and this B rank mission reward is the same as a newbie exam and so he says this is getting interesting we find out that the mission is to go to a level 10 area, the burial desert, to search for the lost village and kill the devil. Also, you need to require level 10 and obtain newbie king to be qualified for the mission, and that's why he obtained it. We then see our MC on a throne in his mind, and our boy looks pretty cool. He then flips his coin in his hand, saying, Burial area, huh? That also means that I entered in this place by chance, and he tosses his thing up in the air. And he says, number 911, beginner village head. I'm the only one who suits this title, and I'm going to have to agree. He then begins to use his attributes. He says, use them all. And oh my gosh, our MC begins to get stronger. And we see notifications saying that all his attributes have been added. Guys... His strength is at 463 plus 83, that's like 550 or 40, I don't really know. His mind is 470, and he has 5, what is that, 5 rank talents, element talents, and his combat ability is 47 stars. He then says, as he has this silver thing on his neck, now he can of course use a black ore into his body. He mentions that of course his metal has upgraded his control, he can even use the pierce penetrate destruction skill, and it is way stronger now. He then pierces the bodies of the ants, and he says that his mental spirit use also decreased by a half, so he doesn't have to use that much of his brain when he is attacking. And oh my gosh guys, RMC just stretches because he is so strong, saying well this is enough skill to deal with a normal beast. I don't know about normal bro, but you're really this way too OP. He begins to laugh and he says I also gained a lot of good loot but it's now time for the main event and we see a very beautiful chest right here and oh my gosh this is absolutely awesome. We see him holding three of these blue chests and we see a notification saying that he is requesting or somebody is requesting a private chat. Of course it is one of the people from 9-11 and he says Boss Chin Feng I want to trade with you what do you want? He says I have a chest fuse card and I want to trade for the Blood Wolf War Sword and we see see a card right here which is Compose, and it is a treasure chest. Our MC begins to ponder, saying, well the chances of getting good items are pretty much at a 2%, but he says, nonetheless guys, let's go and accept this. He says, let's begin, and our MC begins to open his chests. He opens up the gold chest, and he receives the Wind Deity boots, and he also receives a rank 4 item, the Illusion Shadow Necklace. He receives, a, he receives a Phantom Necklace, and he also gets a reminder saying that he has a clone now guys, oh my god but it only has half of the main character's ability. He says, really, this is truly awesome. And everybody on the chat is like, oh my gosh, because our boy Chin Feng is literally going to the market and wants to trade with people. They are all talking about
about how this is crazy because Lord Jin Feng is the strongest in the 911 village. He then arrives and says well, he's literally at the top of a cliff on the grassland like our boy is literally Crollo Lucifer from Hunter x Hunter. He says I'm coming for you guys as he dashes ahead like an absolute speedster. He then begins he then begins to chop up these centipedes. Oh my gosh, he's even killing giants at the same time. Our boy is way too OP. He lets out another Kamehameha like he's Goku and he says as he's holding a phoenix by its head, I need to buy a large amount of ferocious beast corpses. And oh my gosh, he then says though, something is coming. He then jumps down and arrives in the village and our boy lands like he is Spider-Man. Anyways, he doesn't even have any hint of jokester mood or anything and he looks towards this very eerie forest. A portal arrives and he says long time no see and I wonder what exactly he is referring to. The chapter starts and we see a huge kaboom. He says when did you become so strong? Oh my gosh guys, it is the Beerus from before and he literally destroys all of them. He says, one day has passed and you're no match for me now. Oh wow, these are all level 10 hell soldiers and they just got wrecked. He then begins to search their bodies and he says, let's see how you revive. Notification that they dropped a dark seal fragment as it is in his hand and there's some sort of weird message here. You get a notification saying that the Blue Star World first 10 to complete the mission will get one gold chest and the first 10 village to complete the mission, their attributes will increase by 100%. He is the 7th to activate the mission, so he needs to finish it quickly. And he says Blue Star World should mean my world's tens of billions of people. And so he wonders why he's only the 7th. He says I only have 6 scrolls right now, and it seems like Blue Star World has many experts. So if he doesn't do this fast, he won't get into top 10. But yeah, this guy's probably already top 1, and he'll probably be in top 1 for the most of the story. He probably will. Anyway, we see a big fat Buddha dude. I don't know what this guy is. He has an axe or a weapon in his hand about to crush your MC, but our MC manages to dodge. He then says, Level 10 newbie king, much weaker than me in the past. And this guy says, watch, but then his head literally gets detached like his from his body like a Lego, and our boy just gets the gem from his head. He says, high level doesn't mean strong. Combat ability is the key. He leveled up to level 11 and he even obtained a dark crystal. And we see another cultivator like our boy is out of a Chinese mono, which this is a Chinese mono, but anyway, we see this guy and he has ice around him. He says, this fatty, that fatty is still the same trash, but our MC just looks at him. And he says, well, this dude is definitely stronger than that bad guy. They then begin to fight and he has an ice spear in his hand, but our MC brings out his sword and kaboom kaboom, he says, why don't you personally apologize to him? The guy says, how is this guy so strong? And of course, our MC punches him in the face. Oh my gosh, and he gets sent flying like our boy is Saitama. He is then on the ground, and he says, I warned you not to touch me. And we see now that our MC's hand is covered in ice, and soon we see his body here completely covered in it. He says, as for the price, I will crush you with one attack. But our MC, well, it doesn't matter because he just uses his metal rods or his tentacles to go right through the attacker. He says, our MC, I forgot to tell you. Don't come near me, otherwise you'll just become XP for me to use to rank up. And yeah, that is definitely a truth. We then see a dark image of some sort of devil, and I'm guessing this is who he has to defeat. It is in the air, and he says the wraith's roar makes this place even more dense. And I'm guessing that that is a thing in the sky. We then see people begin to gather around him, and we see that there are four of them. And he says seven dark crystals should have seven wraith messengers. Where is the last one? And it is actually right behind him and it's actually a cute girl and I wonder if he's going to rizz her up and she's going to fall for him. He then begins to fall dizzy and he is literally falling into a trance and he wakes up in a sort of garden. We see the lady who made him fall asleep here with her eyes closed and yeah I'm not gonna lie she is really cute. Well that doesn't matter because it seems like they're gonna get into one on one combat but actually our MC is just walking here mindlessly and one of the ladies says so this human's weakness is a low mind and the guy in the blue hoodie mentions this dude is definitely doomed. The girl who hypnotized him says come this way come a little bit closer as the other people begin to strike him 
but he teleports behind the knight with a sword and he cuts him right through the center. Oh my gosh, our MC is absolutely OP. He cuts up the lady as well and he mentions when you guys are tricked, it's indeed the best moment to attack. All of them are literally scared and the lady who tried to hallucinate him says, he didn't fall for the illusion. Yeah, our boy is just a max level Rizzler, Giga Chad, Sigma Chad, whatever you guys want to call him. The old man has some sickles in his hand trying to slash her MC, but he just steps on the hoodie guy and he grabs the grandpa and he throws him over towards the rock and how many times has this happened in the story? I swear this happened like 10 times already. The lady is behind him again and he says you're courting death and he slices her in half but we just see some Sakura petals in the air. He says, I felt that I cut her and it begins to circle around him once more and he cuts it again and he jumps up but it seems to follow him more. Okay, this is where it gets serious guys. He is literally wrapped up in this sort of cloth and the lady begins to form herself again. And she says as her boy is held up in the air, you're so interesting. She says even at only a level 11, you managed to defeat so many level 15 warriors. She then begins to say with a very weird look in her face, like a some sort of stalker and of course she's probably obsessed with him now. She says, I decided to kill you then let Wraith Lord check your memory. But it seems like before that I'm going to punish you as she makes him go through a lot of rocks. Our MC says though, I can do this. He uses Unleash Hellfire with his hand and he burns her up and we see her right here and yeah she's looking very vulnerable. She says dang it it hurts so much. She says how do you have so many skills? No one can own more than three. She says no this shouldn't be happening. But her MC says a mere weakling really trying to talk trash to me. You know what just get out of my face. We then see a gemstone right here and I'm guessing yep he killed a level 16 Wraith Messenger which is a king rank and he gained 10,000 XP and 140 judgment points. Our MC then puts the stone in sort of this pillar inside of this pillar or something and it begins to gather some energy. We then see a beam of light like a beacon in Minecraft come up from the sky or down to the sky you know, vice versa, and we see that newbie Chin Feng has released Wraith successfully, and now he is level 13, oh my gosh, but the XP requirement is 500k, but all of his stats are literally buffed, and yeah, our MC is just getting way too overpowered, and that's what happens when you have an SSS rank. The chapter starts and our MC looks up at this monster and he is being overlooked by its shadow. This is a level 17 Wraith Messenger and it yells out very furiously. Our MC manages to block one of its attacks, however of course our boy goes for another one and he's underneath his hands. He then sees it literally through his eyes and this is a scary monster. The monster's hand is filled with blood and he says what just happened? But our MC is underneath, of course, it is the hand of the monster and he's barely pushing it up. The monster says don't get so cocky but our MC manages to dodge and so now he's going in for another attack. He tries to slash the defense, what the heck and yep yeah, it just doesn't work. And then we see a random Kamehameha and he jumps up in the air to attack it once more. But he literally blocks it off, our boy must have some OP defense and our MC says Oh crap, but he didn't say that. But anyway, the monster yells out and goes to attack it once more. And her MC says, I need to try this attack. And he gets his sword. He imbues it with mana and he goes behind the back. He then slices it and the monster falls to the ground. And her MC says, sure enough, this would be very difficult. But because I already got your weak point, this will be a piece of cake. The monster yells out and look how sharp this dude's teeth is. Sadly, we also see some mysterious puddle here and something red comes up from below it. Our MC then tries to run but behind him is the fist of the monster and he gets sent flying, oh my gosh, and he spits out blood. But it seems like he uses some of his energy to recover himself. He then says with a sword in his hand holding him up, Really, I can recover myself in a few seconds, but of course, he needs to exhaust his opponent because this won't last forever. The monster yells out, why haven't you died? But our MC died, or okay, our MC didn't die, but our MC says, if you died, I also won't die. And so now it is time. And our MC dashes at the monster so quick and he even flips this image around and kaboom, he slashes it, but he is stuck to its body. He manages to use a shadow clone and he is walking away from it. And we see the shadow clone and him are about to attack him. The monster is getting confused now and slash, he slices one of its arms. He doesn't slice it off but he manages to injure it very well injure it badly no yeah injure it badly and then the monster says as he is in agony i've been observing him as we see an image here the monster says since he killed that lady by ruo something became 
very mysterious. The monster is literally bleeding from its mouth, and oh my gosh, yeah, this monster, this ray thing, it's gonna die instantly. Our MC and his shadow clone begin to go and attack it. As you see it right here with the metal things, he slashes one of its arm and it does a lot of damage. And we go back to the village and we see Area 1171 Beginner Village number 622 has finally killed a wraith monster. And let's go, our boy finally did it. They are saying, oh my gosh, another one entered top 10. And this isn't the village of our boy. One of them begins to discuss, wait a second, nobody cleared this previously. So of course, this is very mysterious. This guy begins to pray saying, Boss Chin Feng, please enter the top 10. He is safe, it's good enough, right? But this guy cheers saying, Chin Feng did definitely succeed and I take that back guys, I guess these guys are definitely rooting for Chin Feng. Chin Feng is literally sitting on top of the monster and he lies down saying that this was so tiring. But he receives a truth of the village which is a scroll and so he opens it and we find out that there was actually a protection barrier that got removed and judgment angel descended upon them as you see the angel right here it says that this is an existence that cannot be shaken by even a thousand people and of course he literally destroyed the village and this guy that is saying it is just right here with his dead loved one behind him he says i couldn't do anything and this is so sad this guy tries to charge at the angel but to no avail and he literally gets pierced through his heart and he says i will definitely destroy this angel if i have a chance and we find out that there is this goblin controlling him oh my gosh this guy is literally getting used around like it is from hunter hunter from neferbitu if you guys know what i'm saying and his soul leaves his body and our mc says really huh and the mc ponders saying so that wraith messenger was actually that dude who died and was controlled by that goblin he says how troublesome and we then see two people here and they are exhausted saying the level 8 ferocious beasts are so hard to kill one of the ladies mentions when will boss chin establish the village and they are right here and this girl even says calling beloved boss chin fang yeah yeah this girl might be a bit crazy they are then kind of shocked because of course she says what is this this guy yells saying as expected of boss chin now they can establish their village Boss Chin then says, we still need to give up our village, or sorry, we need to give our village a cool name. So what are your thoughts? Somebody says, let's name it, oh my gosh, somebody says let's name it the Tyrant Village, the Deity Village, but he then settles on the Dragon Abyss, and that sounds pretty awesome. We then see the scroll that he received up in the air, and he says the name has been decided, establish the village. And we see a beacon ray go up to the sky, and everybody looks up at it. We then see a weird mysterious sphere or barrier come around the town, and yes, guys the village has been established they then get some buffs and they even say it feels like i can take on stronger monsters now this guy is actually messing around and we see that this says to return to a village you can be teleported back to the beginner wooden house and so he clicks on return to village he says let's try it out but this girl says wait no but he teleports inside of a wooden house and this guy says brother i am back Yes guys, this is a pretty good ability, and they are literally around these wooden houses. And so, we also get a notification that leader Chin Feng has entered a conference call. And so, he says, After beginning assessment ends, our beginner village will face a 100 stars judgment angel. And so, we need to get stronger. Everybody says, I'm only a 10 star combat ability, how can I do this? He says, we still have 4.5 days, so everybody try to reach level 10, and that's all you should do. They say we can do it, and our MC says, as he has a stone in his hand, we need to get stronger and update the conditions. He then explains that first, we need to reach 500 people in our village, and of course, we already achieved that. Second is to obtain the newbie emperor title, and third is to upgrade to a level 2 wooden house. And everybody is literally sitting on this grassland with nothing to do saying how will we do that we need wood stone and beast fur and this guy says how about we establish a trading channel our mc says upgrading materials huh i have them right here as it seems like he destroyed another village he then clicks upgrade and a house just randomly appears like it spawned in from minecraft and kaboom this is the first house house oh my gosh i don't know why i said that and he says guys do you think boss chin feng is a deity why is he so strong and yeah yeah guys this is what happens when you are part of a manhwa and yeah your boss is pretty much the mc but then it suddenly switches to blue star which is number 9321 village in the eternal night and oh my gosh this dude literally bites a person this guy's a vampire and yes this is the vampire dracula and he says my dear john how's the situation the guy says as expected 914 
has become a village of our blood clan. And this guy spills blood on the dude the other guy just bit, and he becomes a vampire. I don't know if this is a vampire, but it goes crazy. And this guy just says, let's go, there's only five villages that pose a threat. And so... We see here that there are big monsters, big rabbits, big boars, whatever these are, and they are literally eating the dead corpses. And yeah, this is kind of crazy. You're not even going to cook it. I mean, I'm guessing they don't have any cooking skills because this isn't a cooking manhwa, but whatever. Our MC says, put the wood over there, put the wood over there. And it seems like this city is slowly getting established. He says, I only lack one rank first stone. And of course, he can upgrade the beginner wood house. And he begins to ponder, saying, well, this is going to take kind of long, but he of course winds his arm back like saying guys this is so easy just kidding but he just mentions that he is going to complete two missions together they then say brother chin feng we love you come on my wood house can be upgraded and he says no need to thank me it's just of scraps he then runs super fast saying everybody can become stronger through other ways and yes they are all getting strong through helping and we even see a lady here that is transporting food to the workers and this is pretty cool our mc of course is not part of the olympics but he just jumps into a waterfall guys and he's swimming and he realizes that he can't dive and he goes back up because there was a literal leviathan swimming in the water he says he was too smug and he almost died in a dumb way but just at that moment the leviathan is literally coming up towards him and our mc is in its mouth our mc says what the heck he holds his breath and he kills it and it seems like he extracts the body he then gets gills meaning that he can swim and pull his breath underwater and we see these weird looking fishes above him he says let's go it's now time to annihilate them he then freezes them all up like this is a refrigerator or sorry guys our boys just put him in a freezer and he says giddy up and he's literally taking control of this crocodile and he hits it saying come on go faster and bring me to my destination oh my gosh he sees a tortoise though it is a random turtle rest in peace to this tortoise i don't know how it got here but anyway we all see there's a bunch of tortoises here or turtles and our mc says come here come back and of course yes guys it is a crocodile and our mc says if you run away i will find you our mc then begins to use his ability and skadoosh we then see it is a turtle with a peacock head and a snake also this is a really weird thing but anyway he uses his kamehameha but the snake tries to attack our mc he says what the heck are they doing and oh my gosh they are getting ready to attack him he says they're working together huh but that won't be a big deal because i know that our mc has definitely something up his sleeve they then try to load up this rasengan and boom it is a piercing arrow but of course our mc dodges it and he dodges it even more saying that oh oh actually guys let's just cut the dialogue and our mc gets hit in the leg this is so sad he says oh no because of course he's hiding behind a rock and this turtle king or queen or whatever is definitely op he says if he can't make them leave the water, then he's going to have to aim for the king first. And so he summons up a shadow clone like he is Naruto. I mean, this is not Naruto, but this guy looks pretty cool. I don't know why I just said that. But anyway, he says he just start moving as we see them all using their attacks at the shadow clone. And just at that moment, his shadow clone was literally wrecked to pieces. And so the king says, I wonder what this is. Our MC tries to attack it from behind, but kaboom, it manages to not even take that much of a damage. And the snake is about to bite him but he uses shadow restriction. The snake is then bound right here, and he says die as he grabs the snake, and yes, he finally kills a horned turtle king. It is a king rank. Oh my gosh. We see the corpse right here, and he has finally reached level 12. And yeah, he says with his shadow clone, a group of turtles without its leader, it's time for him to harvest it all. And yeah, our MC really has no mercy. Yes, guys, it seems like all of these turtles are literally getting their shells pierced through i forgot what the word was my bad guys anyway the crocodile then says big bro the eye stone is in front come with me and it seems like this crocodile has become obedient we then see somebody holding onto a picture or an ipad of our boy chin feng and she says he's so handsome i want to date him yeah guys this is just what happens when you're an mc you're gonna get a harem and you're definitely going to be the ultimate rizzler this is literally a stadium full of ladies and they are looking at the actions of the people and they say about chin feng these two ladies hopefully he can surprise us and talking about surprises our boy is literally in the air on top of a hawk oh my gosh when did this happen we see it right here our mc mentions that only an hour passed and he already surpassed lu xian that means li yuan is pretty good because he 
reach level 8. Of course, he is on top of this eagle in the sky, and he says, are energy stones that much in demand? Because of course, they all want to get some. Our MC then says, that is it. I know what to do. Those dudes are becoming rich, and they are very cunning. He says they donate one newbie weapon to receive two contribution points, and because of the profit they sell back, they get in 10, so they're pretty much getting super rich. He then hears something in the forest though, and we see a lady getting harassed by these random dudes. And yeah, I'm not gonna mention what they are, I don't even know who they are bandits probably, but they're side characters, so it doesn't matter. She begins to cry, but her MC says, you are not suitable to be called humans, and how dare you lend a finger on one of your kind. Yes, let's go, RMC says though. We see an image of a track and field here. RMC says that people will take advantage of others, and the only way to get through this is to get stronger. He then brings the lady on top of his hawk, and he puts her down saying, make sure you be safe and go back to the village. She then says, thank you, Boss Chin. And as he's in the sky, he says, I wonder if I can send out wanted posters posters so that that would be great and our MC looks very furious here. He says it's like a mouse in the gutters. Of course he then arrives to his destination and he sees a lot of these flowers. These are actually the, the diluting human eating flowers guys. This is kind of scary. Up looks can be deceiving but this is a level 15 with a 24 star combat power but our MC says I'll just destroy them all. We then see slice slice slice. It seems like our MC has literally become a gardener in a manhwa and we see that all of their stems have been written and off. He says, as he gets kind of nervous, it hurts, it hurts. And so it is actually the plants that are talking. And we see a huge one here with like 50 sets of teeth. He says, what the heck is going on? He is in the poison and his arm gets scratched and he tries to get away saying, I can't get hit by this. He then smiles saying, that's more like a level 15 plant. And he says, I thought this would be boring. Our MC then runs and oh my gosh, it's like plants versus zombies. But um, it's plant versus humans now, because of course these plants begin to run away saying they're too strong, or the, our boy MC is too strong, and Chin Feng says they really ran, and even his tentacles are like really bro. Anyway, he manages to get the resource Greenwood Core, and it is necessary for a rank 3 cabin, and he begins to slice these up easily. He then jumps in the air, and he says it's time to just keep doing this as we see this monster look up like bro. Please spare my life, but skadoosh, and yeah, the monster just dies. He uses his divine sight, as you see all the taken down plants around him, and he manages to see this mysterious tree, and this is actually the blood drinking wasp. And oh my gosh, these, I hate wasps or bees, like, if they sting you, I don't know, I've just always been kind of worried about it. He then smiles, saying, I need to try out my new skill. And we see a blue aura circle around him. And oh my gosh, the sky is filled with these icicles. And this is Ice Storm. And yeah, GG to these wasps. They literally, wasps, they actually literally get wrecked by our MC's ability. Kaboom, kaboom. And yeah, our MC reaches level 13 just like that. They are even buried in the snow because of his icicles literally changing the atmosphere and the weather. And he says, really, I killed 3,000 wasps in a single move. And he says, it's your turn now. And he's pointing towards the old dead wood beast and who would have expected that this tree is a monster. We then see a face come out of the tree and she says, very interesting. And what the heck, this tree really just turned into a girl. Please don't tell me that she's gonna be become his waifu. Anyway, our MC says, to bring it on. And she brings all of her monsters to come out. And she even brings a Golden Wasp King. It's a 47 combat star. And yeah, this dude looks really buff like a Giga Chad Wasp. Whoever knew that we would see something like this. He then says, listen to my command. And oh my gosh, all of them stop. And we see that the boy is literally 1.67 million XP out of 2 million from ranking up. And I can see why they would obey him. However, we then see it is a king coming towards him. And oh my gosh, this king is way huger than the others. But of course, the other wasps are literally coming, ar coming around him, trying to block him because they now believe in our boy as their king. And he successfully kills it, the level 15 golden wasp. And it even drops a golden wasp king jelly. He says, really? Really, really, really? I just used a little tactic and you guys got defeated. And the lady says, what the heck? You can use fire and ice? How is this even possible? 
And Rims, he says, I just got the most risk. Just kidding, guys. He didn't say that. But anyway, he says, well, as soon as the controlled wasps came into contact with the target, I used Hellfire to explode them. And he says, it was a Pyrrhic ability, but the results are definitely worth it. He then jumps on the girl. Pause. Anyway, he throws a slasher head, which seems to be like these vines, and he cuts them off. And oh my gosh, it seems like she is another version of Medusa. She says, what the heck? It's suppressing my healing ability. And she says, no, if this continues, I'll really die. She then gets angry and this purple sort of vines or energy circles him and her MC seems to be in a different space. He says what's going on and oh my gosh our boy turns into an old grandpa and he says I'm aging very fast and of course it seems like it is sucking out his life force. He then uses miracle healing arts and oh my gosh we see half of him is young and half of him is old and what would you guys do if this is how you look forever like half of your body was young and half of your body was old not even just your face like your whole side of your body that would be pretty terrifying anyway he says wood type beast moves are weak to fire and so let's try to burn it but oh my gosh it seems like his red blood cells are literally getting affected by this and so she says how is he able to break out and her mc becomes pac-man because he literally caught it all or ate it all he ate the ghost. I don't know. I just forgot what Pac-Man was about. But anyway, he says as he has his fist up, Nice, I almost died in your hands. And just as he is about to... Oh my... <laughs> Just as he is about to punch her guys, she begs for her life saying, I'm just a tree. I haven't seen or heard a human in many years. She says, please, I'll even give you my king soul crystal. And yeah, she has it right in her hand saying, here you can check it out. I also have, I have something else. She then says, I have to distract him to give my time for my children to revive. And this girl really is just lying to him. This seems like it is a rank five fire eagle battle pet egg for compensation. And she gives it towards him. She says, do I look like an idiot? And oh my gosh, it seems like her plants have revived, but her MC says, The things behind me make so much noise, I can't pretend not to notice. And boom, he slices it off again. And he says, I thought you were level 16. You're not even that strong. She says, wait, but her MC slices her head off and her boy is ain't no simp. She mentions the fire demon king is, but it seems like he doesn't even care. And he receives an old dead wood beast of the king rank. He even receives a level four prestigious points. And more importantly, it is a silver chest. And it looks, this looks very prestigious, actually. The extraction was successful though, guys, and let's go. Our MC gets the battle pet in his hand, and oh my gosh, I wonder if this will be a little cute companion that our MC has. We then see this is the Phoenix battle pet egg, and he needs to feed it blood energy, and that is exactly what he is doing. It is said that to have the bloodline of the holy beast, it can even reach the Terra rank, which is probably one of the highest, and our MC says, come out, my tier 5 battle pet. And yeah, guys, let's go. It is a cute little baby bird here, Phoenix. And he says, why is it so small? But it gets kind of angry, but skadoosh. We then see it is a huge Phoenix. And yeah, this is his combat potential. We then see it right here flapping in the air like it is Flappy Bird. And RMC mentions that if I use 60%, which is 80 stars, this will definitely become way stronger. It then likes him, and it seems like he calls him Little Luan. And yes, it seems like they have now been linked by this establishment. And it seems like he used his blood bond. If the monster, or I'm gonna call it this little baby phoenix, I'm gonna just call it Luan anyways. So Luan just jumps around very happily and it says master master and it seems like he can't communicate with him. The monster says, or sorry guys, Luan says that it is a hungry and she says I am hungry and he just keeps on saying it. He says yup it is a hungry child and this will be way more difficult than I thought. Oh my gosh, he is literally flying on top of this lizard dragon. I don't know what this is. And he feeds the monster mana, I'm guessing for now. It then says, little Luan is not just a mere beast. I am definitely strong and no one will be able to feed me. Not feed me, defeat me. Anyway, they are on top of this blazing volcano. And there are monsters here with eyes on them like they are demons. RMC says, oh yeah, this is a demon, huh? And this is a level 16 lava demon. Of course, little Luan jumps into the battlefield and wrecks it so easily. And it seems like it received 910 energy points. It then begins to suck them in. And yeah, our MC also receives some mana. And yeah, this is so OP. He even receives a card here, which I don't know what this is. But it seems like he can definitely use this to sell it or something. Our MC then redeems it, and of course, it seems like his current prestige points is at 87, but something catches his eye. Yes, guys, his battle pet has reached level 2, and all of these monsters come out of the volcano, and it seems like they are going into somewhere. And let me tell you where that somewhere is, guys. It is Luan's belly. Just kidding, but it has 
combined itself to this sort of humanoid like Mike Wazowski if he was a fire demon or something and they begin to fight and RMC says a 52 stars lava demon king is not something that my little Luan can deal with. We then see a trade option here and he says hmm somebody's making a losing proposition here right and it says here I want to use tier 3 items in exchange for that tier 3 sword of yours and oh my gosh this is definitely going to be a scam for the other dude. We then see the giant fighting our little Luan but our MC is literally just on a system like I am at my phone when my family is out I'm just on my phone watching YouTube or maybe I'm watching Mono Infinite and I want you guys to subscribe. Anyway we then see he is on the phone with this person and he says although these three ranks items are rank three they've been contaminated and our MC says I wonder what this is. He says yeah I want to trade them for the great cleaver and our MC says fine let's trade and so he uses the extraction. We then see on his wrist he gets a bracelet for both of his arms and even receives some arm guards of light a pair of them as well. He then says relics of the light messenger huh? He wonders if there's hidden information. And yes there is a new announcement guys it is a reminder that Dragon Abyss Village has met the requirements and so it is time to upgrade. RMC says come on little one let's go back and our little one uses his heaven's blaze fusion and he completely wrecks this demon lava monster and the rest of them fall back into the crater of the volcano. He then says behind you, he says no, and the monster or Luan says that the monster is too strong, so our MC uses Ice Storm, and boom, the monster says, quite interesting, that somebody could become such an expert. Our MC teleports back into a house, and he says that was way too close, and fortunately, he used the one click return village function from his system. He then upgrades the village, and oh my gosh, we see it happening right here, it has successfully been upgraded from rank 0 to 1, and we see a tornado start to form in the sky. Guy, just kidding but anyway it seems like yes guys everybody receives 50 attribute points and Chin Feng receives a hundred of it everybody then begins to get a hundred attribute points for some reason and oh my gosh our boy is making his village OP we are back in the blue star realm in the eternal night village and we are in a lake and it is Dracula again and it seems like he has finally acquired the frosty stones this dude's literally naked oh my gosh but then we hear the first rank 1 village in the blue star realm has been upgraded and yeah the dracula is like wait what our mc is just chilling on the couch and it seems like he has obtained some rare materials and he upgrades his house and oh my gosh this looks like a house from earth it literally has a kitchen and yes guys finally it is a bed for a boy to just crash in he then upgrades to a level 3 and it now has a bath and we see the competition countdown is at 74 hours so that's a bit over three days and this is called Sasha it is a floating system thing that is kind of the same size as Luan and it says like your village can be eligible for double rewards he says that you have 10 minutes to consider because of course they will be getting 2,000 attribute rewards and villagers will get 1,000 attribute rewards and our MC looks at himself in the reflection of the toilet just kidding guys he's in the bathtub and he says hmm interesting huh it seems he has to make a guardian altar and he says if it also takes one to two days and there's not much time for upgrading to level 3 and so he says I think this is worth it they then ask what do you think and the people look up into the air because of course they see the timer they say of course whatever Lord Chin says we will do and so he agrees to the challenge and oh my gosh our boys are definitely going to be over geared and everybody is so happy now that of course their heavenly Dao rewards will literally double However, things might not go as planned because the first requirement is to reach a population of 1000 and the village chief needs to have a rank 3 newbie cabin. Oh my gosh, also rank 1 cabins have to reach 400 and this guy says with his head full of sweat, Oh crap, wait, we're actually done for guys, the Dragon Valley is done. But then, he points his finger saying, Of course I'm not negative, because somebody called him out. He said the population is 1000 and we only have 930. They then say, Without enough people, we can't level up. And oh my gosh, I thought they were gonna have to start reproducing, but thankfully, uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know, but hopefully that's not the case. Our MC yells out, everybody calm down, I'm working on a rank map expansion mission, and after that, he can recruit people into the larger world. 
they then to literally begin to cry, guys. Oh my gosh, this is just so funny. They say, oh my gosh, that's so great. There are 17 more kingdoms that we can recruit from. He then yells out from, of course, a flying image of him. Everybody, the difficulty of this mission is still very high. I will assign everybody a job. But of course, the people down below say, we will do anything for you, Chin Feng. Please help us! And yeah, this is just honestly pretty cool. We see right here the villager tracker system, and we also see the voice message command system. These are the two functions that he has unlocked after leveling up the village, and everybody here, they look very unique, and it's, they look honestly pretty cool. I like the designs, guys. And the system is quite adamant on the fact that they need to gather. Yes, guys, it is wood and stone, so this might become very laborious. Our MC is right here with, of course, Luan, and he says, We have to get our village to level 2 within 2 days. And they look very determined, and everybody on the ground say the same as well. He then says with the silver chest in his hand, he really needs to level up his items just in case he has to go against that Dragon King. But, of course, he then says with the cards in his hand, treasure chest combination cards and silver treasure chests, this will definitely be something great to open. He then opens it all up, and yes, guys, oh my gosh, he obtains a heavenly knight sword and yes this gives you plus 300 attack and plus 100 dark power and 100 wound tear he then says with this awesome weapon everything will be a piece of cake and he says here with his little phoenix here i come you dragon demon king he is then at the volcano again guys and yes this is actually called hell mountain he arrives and he sees right here is a fiery red lotus which is a rank 4 spiritual flower we see somebody waving saying, Human, I am here, look at me. I know my presence isn't that great, but could you at least spare me one of your glances? He then says, who the heck are you? And this is actually a human of the Emperor rank and he's level 18 with 99 stars. What the heck? Oh, oh gosh, guys. There is a tip here from the system saying that this person is extremely dangerous. Anyway, he then says as he's walking along the crater, it was too bad the newborn chick was too fragile and it instantly died. He says, then I eliminated all of them, and oh my gosh, this guy is absolutely brutal. He says, later on, Heaven Dows told me to constantly roam around. Actually, they didn't tell me that, but it is a bad thing. But he instantly teleports, and he says, Fire Demon King. That is my name, as he is right in front of our MC. Our MC tries to slash him, but he then backs up in an instant. Our MC says, what does that mean? Because he says, the small thousand world. Our MC gets in a fighting stance as long as, as well as Luan actually, and he says it seems like there are other people who are way stronger. Of course, the Demon King then says, even if I told you, it would do no good. And he says, enough with the yapping, it's time to start this show. Oh my gosh, he then uses his ability and glass fire snakes literally come out of the crater of the volcano like it is an eruption and they go to attack him and these look pretty ferocious. RMC then says with a smug look on his face, only a combat power of 37 stars. It seems you overestimated their abilities. He then launches arrows towards them and we also see that his little phoenix is at the front of the pack and yeah, this literally looks kind of scary. Oh my gosh, kaboom, it goes right in the mouth and it literally slices these ones in half. He says it dropped a new item and how do I use this fire glass. Our MC attacks it with a sword and the kid says, very good with a very psychotic look on his face. I don't know why he has this on. But anyway, he puts his fist and his palm together saying, let's see how strong a level 15 emperor is and he begins to attack him with his manhwa. No, mong magma. What am I saying? Honestly, guys, when you read this much manhwa, it really gets confusing. He then summons up a lava giant. Oh my gosh. And this target has actually been demonized. So it is way stronger. Or MC says, even though it has a 100 star combat power, I still have the ability to beat this. And so the giant is about to attack him. And the meteor, or sorry, no, the volcano literally erupts. And he says, you have a few tricks up your sleeve. And it seems our MC literally caught this dude's fist. Kaboom. Our MC manages to step away in time as well as his baby Phoenix and he tells it, you should move, it's too dangerous here. And this thing looks absolutely so huge, oh my gosh, I would never want to face this thing. I mean, I'm not an Omanwa. But anyway, he slices and slices, but it seems like the kid is kind of pissed because his arm got damaged by it. And our MC is right behind the giant, but kaboom! Our MC gets sent flying towards the magma and he says as he has his protective shield on, I'm fine, you're not his opponent, so go and find somewhere safe. And our MC says, so when the lava giant receives damage, it seems like that little brat gets damaged too, and he has something up his sleeve. 
Oh my gosh, she then wraps up the giant. And yeah, our MC is ready to kill this the Demon King. I'm not going to say kid because, you know, that could be against the terms of service. But anyway, the kid is right here holding on to his arm. And he says, I'm starting to hate you. And of course, the baby phoenix says, Master. Oh my gosh, we find out that his body can block the repeated damage of a rank 5 weapon. So that means his skin is very tough. He then catches his blade as our MC is right here, kind of shocked by it. And he then butt heads, oh my gosh. And of course we hear Dirty. He then says, I'm tired of playing with you and let's finally end this. And our boy summons a demonic spear or sword from the air and he spins it around. And oh gosh, even the sky is a purple pink and this isn't gonna end well. He then says, go to hell hell and kaboom our mc of course guys how many times have our mcs dodged this i mean chin feng really is a goat but anyway they then begin to fight back and forth and our mc sends some arrows towards the kid and oh no it seems like he got hit it seems to have done a number on him and our mc slashes and of course the demon king barely manages to dodge and he goes up into the air once more and they're really going at it our mc blocks with his sword but he knows that this is not enough yet and he even almost gets pierced by the spear of this demon king. He then says again as he is on the ground, he has to quickly defeat him and open up the map because of course, they really need to increase the level. The kid says, what are you doing here? To change from mortal rank to terror rank is like evolution and you need 130 combat power just to even challenge it. But then the kid says his combat power definitely hasn't reached 130, yet it feels like this kid is way too strong. They are in the middle of the crater or some sort of ground where it seems like it's literally about to erupt and oh my gosh the lava giant appears once more and it crushes our MC but our MC just dodges. This kid is really the goat of dodging, the greatest of all time. And and oh no, the kid is right in front of him. And we see blue lights start to come out of our MC's mouth, his eyes. I wonder what's happening right here. And our MC seems to have been stabbed by the kid's spear. Our MC is literally shivering and we see the spear right through his torso, his stomach. The kid says, I'm about to get mad, you aren't even listening. But just then, the phoenix says, Master, I will save you. And it launches towards a lava giant. And yeah, it got kind of wrecked. Unfortunately, it seems like the lava giant got to our little phoenix. No, and it seems it drops a body and it seems to have gotten burnt. Our MC gets a voice in his head telling him to stand. And we see him on the ground here with aura on his left hand. And yeah, that definitely did rhyme. And our MC gets up, you know, Nikkei 30 says never back down, never what? And yes, never give up. And our MC seems to be unlocking the power of friendship and he's definitely gonna win this. <laughs> Just kidding guys, but anyway, he says no way you're gonna bully my pet. He then throws his sword and uses shadow clone and shadow restriction. And oh my gosh, it seems like a shadow clone is holding down the kid. And he also uses his ability from the ground. And yes, it seems like this kid is done for. He then slices the demon king. And yep, he scoffs out magma. I'm considering that his body is made out of magma or lava. And yes, he has successfully destroyed the demon king. We then see he has obtained the King Soul Crystal and our MC is right here and he looks absolutely exhausted. And also he obtained the newbie Supreme Emperor title. He says we finally won. And of course his little Phoenix says master. And our MC, oh my gosh, the lava giant is still here. But he uses Hellfire and Skadoo, she slices him up. And um, I don't know how many animes you guys have watched, but let's say there are a lot of instances where this has happened. He has also defeated the level 17 giant, not too bad, and he received a thousand energy points. The little phoenix then says you're so good master but then it asks what is wrong. Our MC has this sort of super saiyan aura coming around him and the system notifies him that you have obtained the right to attempt the heavenly martial test. He then says that's the thing the demon king was talking about huh? The system explains that he has to go to the temple of all in the large world and pretty much the heavenly martial test will remake the person's body based on appraisal and so the higher the score the more your body will be praised. Just kidding, changed. Anyway, we then see our MC begins to ponder once more. Every time he does this, I just have to say ponder because he really is a thinker. Anyway, he says that that means that if he gets appraised, then yes. He then looks at his little phoenix as he heals it. And he says, this is a great way to become stronger. He then asks the system, what? What was that? I get rewarded when villagers level up too. And the system says, yes, yes, sir. Anyway, I don't know how the system sounds. But anyway, he then explains if the certain amount of points they get, you get 10 points 
points, right? So 30, let's say they go up by 30 stars in strength, they get 10 attribute points here, or if they go up by 90, he gets 40 attribute points. So that really is not bad. That's at least maybe 15, 20%. He then says very happily, oh, I see now, this is a really good benefit of being the village chief. He then says, this is awesome. And since he has 937 villagers, he can get 9,370 attribute points. He says, if I have 100,000, a million, a billion, a trillion, wait, this guy's really getting ahead of himself. Anyway, then he says, I can truly become the Supreme Emperor. But then the system shatters his dream saying, come on, don't dream so outlandishly. And yeah, he just has an image of three of his comrades. Of course, he then says, he donated the 500 voucher of elf cards he gave, and so this will be very helpful in helping them level up. He then says as he's about to extract the body, boom, it seems like he has managed to get it, and his hellfire has reached level 4. And of course, this is very awesome. He obtains the fire demon spear and the wind blade, and he mentions that he seems like he has to add this to the trading channel, and honestly bro, if he adds this to the trading channel, some of those villagers are definitely gonna get a massive power up but it seems like his little phoenix has something to say and yes of course it seems like the fiery red lotus was actually eaten by Xiao Luan his phoenix and he thought that he would level up but it seems like he didn't he then says endless distraction is my way to get stronger and so he tries to use it but unfortunately we don't get to see what happens and we see an instant of a dude getting literally sucker punched into the air and yeah he begins to roll on the ground he says law of strength as he carries a big boulder and he throws it and i think this is the old dude from earlier i'm not sure and i'm not sure guys with the, the little girl on his shoulder i'm not sure Anyway, we find out that Sir Turgenev has already entered the Fallen Village for 3 hours, and the longer he's there, the higher of success. Of course, we then see something attack him from behind, and no, it seems like he has died and there is a lady with high heels stepping on him. And we are back to our MC, and I'm suspecting that the extraction went well, but somebody tries to cut him up, and he says, this friend, huh? His sneak attacks are not very honorable. And yes, this is a level 20 sacred ground protector that is mutated. His combat power is 52 stars. Our MC literally catches his arrow and the guy says, Wait, what the heck? This dude from the micro world just caught my arrow of light. What the heck is going on? But our MC sends it back to him and it goes right through his head. And I don't know if this dude is made out of stone or anything, but no blood comes out of him. But then another one of a statue or something comes up from the sand and oh my gosh don't tell me that these are undead summons we see a bunch of them begin to rise and our mc says what the heck why is there such a strong scent of blood in the air there seems to be another magic platform in the ground he says what an elaborate presentation and it says that this guy is a forbidden land guardian and he is a pretty old dude. He is level 20 with 109 combat stars. Our MC says I can defeat him. However, if they were to attack together as he is referring to these soldiers of stone kneeling down to him, he says I wouldn't be able to beat him. The old man says I've been observing you and after a thousand years, I haven't seen anybody as talented as you so I need to get rid of you as he brings up a magic circle bringing out his weapon. He then charges at our MC but our MC also loads up his aura and boom he manages to protect himself and it seems like right behind the old dude is some of his abilities he says get lost he says really impressive but oh my god gosh guys I did not expect this this dude literally gets sliced up in half again like our boy is cutting through paper he says you talk too much and this old man really did do too much he then says, it seems like I am getting old. My combat awareness has dropped. And what the heck? This dude really just revived or something? He then says, if I were still alive, I would definitely engage in battle. But our MC begins to slice him. But what the heck? Something begins to come out of his chest. What is this floating stuff? And oh yes, it is a dragon blood fruit. And it is a whole bunch of them. He then accepts it and he begins to eat it. And the guy says, young man, you should eat more. I have plenty more. And thankfully, this dude doesn't seem to be be a bad guy. The old man mentions, because of course our MC is asking about the Holy Martial Assessment, he says, it is divided into five ranks, lower, middle, upper, extreme, and divine. The lower here is right here, and there seems to be a bunch of them, and 99.9 .9 are over there. The middle, only 0.1 can reach this rank, and he says, how about the upper? He says, that is one in a billion, and in the middle thousand realms where he is from, billions of people arrived here, but fewer than 10 have reached the upper rank, and we see them right here, and they look very mysterious and definitely strong. 
But what about the extreme rank? This guy says you have big ambitions, and that's probably one in a hundred billion, and yeah, it's even rare in a great thousand world. And for the legendary divine rank, he says he's never seen it, and it's a pity, of course, because he mentions that he wants to do a master with 280 combat stars. Our old man says, as our MC is holding the fruit, I've calculated that you would need to be at least level 20 with combat evaluation of 300 to even have a chance at the extreme rank. And we see our MC's blood concentration is 2.93, but he says to himself, at least I have time to improve. That is what matters. Our MC Chen Feng then asks with that cute little phoenix on his head, let me know you guys if you would want something like this on you all the time. He says, what is the Great War of 10,000 Realms? And this guy explains that the Great War of 10,000 Realms is a war that occurs every thousand years. He says that every single being fights, and as long as they are alive, they might become deities. We then see the humans right here, and they seem to have some awesome abilities. I hope you get to see these characters in the future, and they're going up against these monsters. However, if they fail, they will be wiped out, they were, and they will barely manage to survive, and we see two women here held hostage, and <clears throat> thankfully they, they uh, blurred that out. Anyway, the old man says as they are both sitting down, I don't know much more information, but if you can break the seal and enter the greater world, you may be able to encounter races that have failed before. Our MC begins to bite the fruit once more. I like that rhyme. Anyway guys, the system notifies him very happily like it always is, that his blood concentration has reached 3.01, and so his bloodline talent has begun to evolve. A huge circle of mana begins to flow around him, and the old man mentions, if it was you, you could probably defeat him, and I wonder who he's talking about. It then switches back to behind him, the people kneeling down to the stone circle with the magic thing and he says if you can't do it this newbie village will turn into hell and we see a huge gyrodos leviathan dragon right here and this is a foreshadowing of his village his combat evaluation goes from 116 all the way to 130 but unfortunately he fails to awaken the skill and he's kind of disappointed and his phoenix is as well of course the old man mentions if you can't finish these leave them for next time and don't worry you'll awaken the dragon soul's power when you do it it once again and our MC is just really disappointed. He kneels and he says, I don't believe there's anyone who gives things away for free in this world. What do you want me to do? This guy says, oh my gosh, this is a golden spear that can enhance the power of any armament. And he says, I want you to extract it. And this looks like a really cute baby with a triangle on its head. Oh my gosh. And then of course, he says as he points. And then after that, I want you to kill the dragon. And this definitely won't be easy. The old man mentions, it seems like an anomaly has started. And so I can't wait any longer. Please try to extract it. This is a golden spirit, it controls B rank gold art, and it was formed through a lot of special things over the course of hundreds if not thousands of years. And so, he uses endless instruction, and oh my gosh, it seems to have started. He obtains B rank earth art, D rank light manipulation, B rank gold art, and of course, merging the five elements, talent, abilities of gold, wood, fire, water, and earth, and it seems like it has begun. We get a mention here, that it is actually successful and he obtained an A rank talent ability and that is a 5 elements art and our MC mentions let's go finally an A rank battle ability and its overall strength has improved but oh my gosh right in front of him is the old man and the old man says don't worry and that is a look he is giving off our MC then charges forward and he says for this dragon who that old man suppressed for thousands of years he says he will kill it because of course he gets flashback to all the monsters he has defeated and he starts to summon the cores of them oh my gosh i just want to say rest in peace to that old man that guy is the real mvp guys and then five of the rays they look kind of like a rainbow begin to form a rays come down from the sky and our mc suddenly gets almost hit by a blade or a dagger of some sorts and this is the maleficent dragon oh it is level 20 with 143 stars of combat power and this thing looks absolutely crazy but honestly it looks kind of cool and i wonder if her mc will be able to tame it anyway the monster or the dragon spots the old dude who got literally stuck struck into stone and he yells out it's you it's you people 
He says, you've tormented me for so years and imprisoned me, and I will bury all of you into the ground. The system for the first time looks kind of furious and wary, saying, slay the dragon and offer it as a complete sacrifice to the heavens and earth. The monster tries to use its claws to attack our MC, but of course, our little phoenix dodges, saying, little Luan cannot block this. Our MC Chin Feng uses his rank 5 sword, and he uses and imbues it with aura, actually, and he says, a mere human level expert, you definitely won't be able to beat me. And Kaido, oh, sorry guys, never mind. This dragon begins to load up another attack, and he says, this is the fire spirit. And the dragons, oh my gosh, guys, the dragon's combat ability has reached 200 stars, and it lets out an attack. We see these utter meteors coming towards our MC, and he tries to run away. And the monster, or the dragon, even praises him that he is pretty fast. But also, guys, I'm gonna call a dragon Kaido. Let's just do it for the memes. Our MC manages to dodge, and he uses some of his shadow technique and Kaido the dragon says you really are quite arrogant huh and of course he attacks some of it and he even slices through it but he says that it is just a puppet so it's not a friend of wounds we then see inherited skill devouring dragon flame and our MC really needs to run away from this one but it seems like he got hit and it is utter f it is literally completely burnt up the ground below this monster our MC says thankfully that was a shadow clone though like our boy is Naruto or maybe Kakashi because he has black hair Wait, Kakashi doesn't have... Never mind. Anyway, he then says even a 4th rank Hellfire won't be able to withstand the flames of this Kaido dragon. And so, he says he needs to counter it with something equally powerful. He then uses his 5 elements art, and he uses the Ice Storm 5-fold. And yes, he sends it towards the dragon, and the energies seem to be clashing with each other. And kaboom, he says, could it be that after being sealed for a thousand years, the power of the dragon has diminished, and of course, he goes to attack it head on. He says, I have to find another way, and he goes inside his mouth, and he, guys, even the monster, even the dragon is like, wait, did I just eat him that easily? And her MC is going through inside of him. He says, it's cold and rigid, but it's not as hard as scales, and yes, he uses Ice Storm inside the body, he then gets hit and injured a bit as well, but the monster yells out at Fury spitting out flames from its mouth. He then tears up a wound in the body, and then he comes out saying, I pierced it through top and bottom, don't think that you will survive. And yes, the dragon right here and all its glory or false glory, evil glory is in the air and it comes crashing to the ground, and the system is happy once again, let's go system, and it says you successfully killed the level 20 Maleficent dragon. Dragon. You gained a thousand judgment points and you gained a hundred thousand energy. Also, it seems like he has completed the C rank mission, the five element seal, but also he gets double the rewards because the difficulty was even higher. So, this is a good thing. And oh my gosh, guys, he receives a dark gold treasure chest, and this looks like a magical chest from Clash Royale. Let me know what you guys think. He says, I won, but right behind him, we then see something shatter. And yes, he broke the seal on the Dragon Abyss Village's face. And yes, his village has now been connected to the greater world. And her MC smile, saying, A wide sea, leap up the fish, sky high, let the bird fly. I don't know what this guy is saying, honestly. But anyway, I'm glad that he has made it. But then see that something begins to happen with the corpse of the body of the dragon. And only a skeleton is left. However, floating right here is the dragon soul essence and fourth rank rare item of heaven and earth. This is actually fourth rank that's kind of good guys and so the residue of the maleficent dragon soul is contained in this orb it flies towards our mc's forehead and he obtains the power dragon might oh my gosh he then lets out a dragon and this time it's golden it is a spiritual skill that can generate intangible spiritual pressure and yes this is definitely so strong that it can even suppress some other bloodlines power and yeah our mc is definitely going to use this to make something pretty op Oh, speaking of OP, his Endless Extraction has went and obtained a B rank Wind Art. And yes, this is way stronger now. And yes, oh my gosh, guys, he actually obtained wings and our boy looks like a Gundam character. And these are the Wind Wings, and it will definitely help him to fly in the sky. Our MC is thousands of miles above in the air, and he says this is way quicker than the Fast Boots. And in his hands are the Magical Treasure Chests, and even we see a little little Luan over there yelling out for Master. It says... 
Yo, you can fly now. Little Luwan can fly with you in the sky. But her MC is kind of confused though why Little Luwan hasn't even upgraded to another level. System notifies, congratulations Dragon Abyss Village for completing the map opening mission. And yes, villages that haven't completed the map opening mission after the newbie assignment won't receive the awesome map reward. And so her MC is kind of happy though, because of course, he has finally gotten this map. This is the map of the Great World and the red dots are the newbie villages. And wow guys, there are a bunch of newbie villages it's literally scattered around this map and there are some blue dots and these are the myriad divine temples and our MC then says and he looks with here with a smirk he says furthermore with the map we can quickly fulfill the village competitions requirement and finally we can get a thousand people the chests then open and they are kind of shocked to see this but more importantly his little phoenix is more shocked dark gold treasure chest successfully opened and he receives heavenly dragon battle armor and also another one opened he receives a sixth rank item zero degree space we find out that this gives him plus 500 defense which is awesome and it even gives him 100 resistance 100 resistance to all the elements except for i'm guessing what's the other element earth probably yeah probably earth and anyway our mc wears it on here and he says his combat evaluation increased by three star levels and yes it is at 158 and this definitely is some op equipment even as little phoenix says master you are definitely the strongest just kidding he says you are the most handsome and yeah this is pretty funny anyway our mc says let's go ahead and accept this mission and he cuts some of his finger and blood drops onto the zero space and we see a purple orb go into his body and yes it seems like he can freely store items and this is literally an inventory he goes inside of it and he says that this space here is a hundred times larger than the storage ring and he even see right here it is a dragon bone mc says this is really convenient because he definitely wanted to donate it but how the heck was he going to carry that all the way there anyway we get a map here it is a myriad divide temple and we also see it is a way to the dragon abyss village and it crosses some other lakes valleys and forests as well but our mc says let's set off there quickly because there are only three and a half days left until the end of the newbie assessment just at that moment he then says that this spatial node connects zero degree space to the world and of course the phoenix says master where did you go you worried me to death but he pats our little phoenix saying come on let's go to the greater world and our mc flies super fast at light speed and and yes, this is definitely so cool. He then slays some monsters on his way there, and he says in an hour he only encountered six savage beasts that were at level 11, level 12, and there were also only one at level 21. Our MC is kind of happy because only nine more level 2 cottages are needed, and eight more level 10 experts are required, and he is very happy here as he chuckles, saying everybody is leveling up fast. He then gives another order, and yes, everybody says, we can finally go out for exploration, let's go, let's go because he gave an offer for them to go into the wounded Chilin forest. We then see it is lightning and a huge explosion happens around the corner, probably 100 meters or so, and our MC dashes towards it. And it seems like there is a monster right here, and there's also a helpless looking lady wearing some sort of caveman cloth. We then see Chi Yui, our MC saves it, and oh my gosh, she tells Xiao Luan, go kill it. And yes, he kills a level 23 electric stoat. And what the heck, we see the massive destruction of our little phoenix, and of course, even the caveman lady is kind of scared. She says, are you the expert who arrived three days ago? And it is another one of the caveman dudes, and he says, are you a challenger? The lady says, please forgive us, it's the first time in a millennium that we've encountered a challenger. So you might not be understanding what we are saying. We find out and they bow down and kneel saying great savior. This is Chi Yui and this is Chi Yun and they are level 10, level 11 and they are pretty good in stats. And hopefully these two don't turn into Genos when Genos asks Saitama for Saitama to become their master. MC says what the heck get the heck off of me I don't know how to save you I have no idea how to save you at all I'm not a savior. But she says the mighty powerful never make mistakes. Look at it. And yeah look at all of those dead bodies. Oh my gosh our little phoenix is so OP. And our MC actually activates a D-ranked mission, but he says, all right, I'll take a look, but he needs to deal with the savage beast's remains. As there is a monster literally lurking around, it is another savage beast, and he says, humans killed my subordinates, and it lets out a monstrous roar saying, I will make them pay with blood. We then see a huge pack of them. I don't know if this is a pack. This seems more of a swarm and they are all coming towards the leader. He says inflict revenge upon the humans and oh my gosh I don't think this is going to end well. We then see a dude standing on top of this watchtower as he announces Chi Yun and Chi Yui are back and everybody is like it's good that they have arrived. However we see apples drop to the ground and this isn't a good sign. 
And yes, of course, Chiyui then says, Auntie, the hunting team encountered a Stoat Swarm, which is the name of the beast. And Chin Feng brings out the bodies from the storage ring, and everybody begins to mourn, and this is truly sad. The village head says, Thank you very much for bringing back the bodies of the Chi clan. I am the elder. May I ask who you are? We then hear, Grandpa, please quickly ask Lord Chin Feng to save our clan members. But then we hear, he doesn't seem happy. Is there something hidden? And the elder says, Sir, could we speak somewhere else? They are underneath the apple tree. And he says, Lord Chin Feng, our clan can be saved once a new challenger appears. That's actually a lie. And he was very startled by this. He explains that the freshly appointed elder will obtain a covenant document see if the challengers have the necessary qualification and the elder bows down saying you must have the title of novice emperor and only one in a billion has this of course that's what the village elder thinks our MC then smiles saying if that's all, I believe I meet the criteria. And we see right here, he displays the system. Dragon Abyss Village, level 1. This, of course, and his title is the new novice emperor. And the village elder says, Your majesty, the emperor among men, permit me to bow down before you. But then, we hear a rumbling. No, don't worry guys, this is an attack on Titan. But we find out that the enemy attack has started. As we see those demonic beasts coming towards their village. Elder says, do not panic, that will be the end of us all. So grab your weapons and gather. We then see Chin Feng go up into the sky and he's about to unleash Hellfire. And of course, the Elder is kind of worried where the heck did our majesty go. Our MC tells the little phoenix, you deal with the remaining beasts. And I will deal with this master. He says, Ice Storm. And oh my gosh, he pierces so many of them and they are all at the level 23 rank. And we see our little phoenix and he of course destroys all of these other hounds as well. Our MC launches a fireball of some sorts and he comes speeding down and he dodges the attacks of this legendary king wolf or stoat, whatever they are called. And our MC grabs it by the horn like it's a unicorn and he pushes it to the ground. He successfully kills the electric stoat king which is at king level and he gains 24,000 energy points. And oh my gosh guys, our boy really is just way too OP and also he also manages to get a golden treasure chest so that's not that bad. The chapter starts and our MC is kind of sad as he is on the corpse because he can't use his extract ability. The village elder then approaches him with a scroll in his hand and all of them seem to be bowing down to him. He says what is this and the guy explains that this is a gift contracted by the heaven thou and with a drop of the master's blood it becomes effective. Blood then gets onto the contract and the system is very happy saying, let's go, he has actually successfully formed a contract with the 327 people of the tribe. They all manage to get attributes and they are all really happy. RMC then says, wait, what the heck, is it really necessary to go through this process? But of course, it definitely is. And we see Little Luan or Phoenix saying, Master, Little Luan thinks they are only about to level up and I need to take a nap and well, our little cute bird goes to sleep and RMC says, what the heck is going on? But the system tells him, because his battle pet is sleeping, it is actually leveling up, so he puts it inside the storage space. You find a new notification that all of his members are in the Dragon Abyss Village, so, well, he needs to rank up the cabins, and our MC says the Chi tribe has been living here for a long time, and it would be kind of awkward to let them move in as well. Our MC then begins to construct houses, and of course the system says, you have completed the Rescue Law Tribe mission, and you obtained 300 attribute points. He even gets a teleportation array, and a protection altar, and of course he makes it and let's go the city is about to be very bustling in a second of course our MC is kind of pissed off because he can rank up now however he says why am I always getting hit by lightning yeah the heavens thou definitely might be pissed off at him of course the system says you have obtained 4700 attribute points and oh my gosh he puts it all into his stats and let me know guys if you had a system where would all your stats go mine would probably be into strength but maybe defense because I'd, it would be really cool if I had like OP defense and nobody could touch me. Anyway, he then receives a seamstress, blacksmith, and herbalist. And he says, I have all five elemental attributes, so now he can learn all the three. He says to build these rank 4 cabin constructions, and he sends out a public announcement, pretty much that he's going to get the population to 1800. 
And the people say, hmm, that is quite hard to meet, but it's not that bad. And so they will all work together. Of course, the cavemen of the tribe are like, what the heck? They're very surprised by this system thing. But our MC just goes on into the sky as he flies. And he says, this is the fourth day. At this rate, they are just waiting to die as we see people running away from the angels that are bringing upon destruction. Our MC says that his combat is far from 300 stars, which is necessary. But somebody goes to attack our MC in the air. And this guy has sand in his hand. And he says, your reflexes aren't bad. And he lets out a sand kamehameha. Uh, but our MC mentions, well, bro, you dare to provoke me. Exactly, he slices it up like it's a Cocoa Puff. And this guy launches even more. This guy really thinks he's Gara. Nah, let's wreck this dude. And it's kabam, he gets sliced up in half. And he says, what the heck? I got a million attribute points, oh, sorry, energy points. Because he says, this dude was literally so easy to kill. Our MC then says, really? So if I defeat a few more, I won't have to worry about the Holy Martial Artist Assessment. And yeah, our MC definitely is just too strong at this point. We see another one red-haired dude. Now this might be actually Gara, guys. He says, this dude just absolutely got wrecked. This guy goes to attack our MC with his chain or his belt of rocks or something. And our MC is underneath the stone and he's about to get crushed. He lets out a shadow clone and they go to fight the man but unfortunately they get destroyed and oh my gosh he's coming after our boy Chin Feng and this doesn't look good. In that exact moment a girl with a red dress on comes out to fight the villain and he says wait you are and she says grab onto my tail. She then begins to exchange blows with him but our MC then grabs her tail with his mouth and she sends him flying. And she says, I can teleport us too far. They then teleport into this literal, they're literally like a floating orb in the sky. And this dude's like, where the heck did they go? Their aura disappeared. And yeah, they definitely lost him. He is now on top of a tree. And he says, I'll stay right here. And let's find out where they are. Our MC is kind of shocked because, oh my gosh, it is Xiao Luan, guys. It is literally his bird. Who would have expected this? And of course, she says, of course, who else could have such pretty feathers and such big bright eyes? The system says a fiery red lotus can help a pet enter a human form early. And our MC says, I really thought you were a boy. And oh my gosh, this is a really huge misunderstanding. Our MC is quite grateful though because he managed to run into only one of the dudes. But he says, it's time to level up as we see a lot of herbs here as well as swords. And let's go, our MC begins to update and or upgrade. And look at all of these, all of his stats are literally going up. And this is definitely a W. Our MC then begins to eat some of the fruits. And we see he is level 17 now and his battle pet is level 10. He says let's go to war and of course little Luan is on the same page as him. He comes out and just at that moment he gets attacked and oh my gosh there was literally like 12 of them and this dude even has 6 arms or maybe he's just so fast at casting the spell and it seems like they're gathering a spirit ball but I don't think that's Goku. Anyway, they launch it at our MC and Kabao Extinction. That is the name of this attack. And they are all explaining how it needs multiple clan members to work together. And yeah, this is pretty much a spirit ball. <laughs> anyway, there is a timer ticking down. And our MC goes to charge with his spirit clones. And even little one uses her heavenly golden blaze. There's four seconds left. And the guy with the hood that looks like Gara says, How the heck is this possible? But oh my gosh, guys, just at that second, our MC comes up with the ultimate fist. And yeah, you know what Sun Tzu said? You know, uh, you know when you punch a dude in the face, you put him in his place. I, I don't think he said that, but the guy then goes underground and our MC is kind of confused. But he tells a little phoenix to go ahead and get the storage rings from the bodies. Anyway, he sees it, of course, and he is tracking it. And it enters the exceeding moon town. And it seems like there is a teleportation or magic circle. And this guy says, don't worry, I'll be back, you just wait. Our MC then tries to slash him, but of course he misses as he teleports. And he says, I was so close to get a large amount of energy and attribute points. We then see he has a material teleportation card. And oh my gosh, we then see he has an image of the monster slaughtering the villagers. He asks the system, if I open the connection, would the Kang clansmen be able to use his entire village? And so he clicks exchange and there is a public announcement saying that Chin Feng has connected the Dragon Abyss and the Exceeding Moon Town. 
He tells him not to teleport, and of course, they say, yes sir, yes sir, we definitely got you. We then see it is a ladder to heaven or the ladder to the sky, I don't know what this is, and of course, our MC is climbing it. He says, if somebody fails to do this, they will literally just fall and die. Um, yeah, that's pretty obvious. But anyway, we see this beautiful castle right in front of us, and we even see a beast wing serpent come up, and this has a combat power of 100 stars. This is the guardian of the temple, and of course, our MC with Little Luan is right there, and Little Luan lets out an attack and it literally just damages it and the dude just ah oh no he died anyway we then are at the myriad divine temple and we find out that there are nine layers of this each of which has a guardian beast but as our mc opens up the tianji hall he seems to be surprised by something we find out that the first person to enter temple from area one received five prestige points and there are a bit of different people lined up right here there is a challenge challenger 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 they look very unique and they're all newbie emperors which is a title that our mc has he then walks and we even see these other personalities like this dude with pink hair and he looks pretty cool it looks pretty cool anyway there is this old lady and she says i think that dude looks very interesting and she says as she licks her lips after i become the empress of the world i won't mind taking him back to my palace and <clears throat> Uh, let's not, uh, let's not just think about what will happen. Anyway, our MC gets startled, and we see, item confirmed. You received a B rank mission as a B rank token goes up into the air. We then see they're actually going into this altar of some sort, and our MC just mentions he needs an item to obtain a mission, huh? But he didn't receive any items, so it's kind of awkward. Our MC then looks at the bald guy walking away, and he says, How could it be a D rank mission? This definitely sucks. Anyways, this guy gets a B rank token, he is so happy, and the lady with green hair, who is a centaur, I'm guessing, is super happy, and the old guy says, Pretty centaur what item did you turn in she then says I, it was a soul crystal of resentment demon so that's why he got a good mission she then gives a wink and she says i'm really strong i defeated this demon but her mc is just like what the heck i just returned to my senses and so he walks up to the altar to get his mission and everybody is calling him a piece of trash but her mc throws all the items up from his inventory and oh my gosh we see a huge blue wing aura come out and everybody is like wait a second we see Item confirmed, you receive a C rank mission, D rank mission, and an S rank mission. Yep, they better take their doubts back. And our MC receives three of these missions. And he says, let's go. And he walks past all of them as they are stuck there, absolutely speechless with nothing to say. And they say, that's at least a mythical treasure chest. How did a person from the lower thousand realms do that? But yeah, never judge a book by its cover. Our MC then walks back to the ladder and he says, things might get a bit messy, but it's time for me to fulfill my duty. He then puts on his wings and he says what the heck is going on and we find out that the first ray of light the temple will disappear so that's why it teleported out of nowhere. We are now at this sort of discussion table and they're pretty much talking about what happened before and this is Kang Song which is the Earth Kang Clan Elder. Another dude Wing Kang Clan Elder Feng Shi, he says that the tribe leader to be able to fight after extinction this means that this person may be over a terra rank but yeah our is probably stronger this guy reasons this is definitely dangerous and the guy from before mentions if he isn't a terra rank expert how could he be that powerful and the old man says all right he says we definitely need to be careful and so of course we need to have a chance to fight in the myriad world war and this is the king tribe tribe leader shu wan Chiang. and everybody agrees saying yes leader you lead us to the way this guy is looking at the stars and he says you've never been to exceeding moon village so you don't know there is a creature dwelling there in the sky and in the gateway and it is absolutely scary oh my gosh and we see a lot of undead corpses coming out of this red purple lake and this definitely isn't a good sign well but this lady in this next chapter doesn't need a sign because she thinks our boy is the ultimate rizzler she says the sister could never forget and she starts to touch up on our boy our mc uses divine sight and oh my gosh she says what do you see and it is an actual a monster and oh yeah this is actually a great deception our MC says I only needed one glance to tell you aren't human and so she turns into this very creepy undead creature and everyone around them become the same and look at these guys this looks absolutely terrifying we see a lady have a bone her spine literally comes out of her throat to attack our MC but our MC uses hellfire on his body and skadoosh it doesn't do anything more come after him but of course our MC is just that guy he is literally him and he says, wait a second, hellfire.
Sunfire was unable to kill these ghosts, and that's why it might be a bit of trouble. Our MC slashes them nonetheless, and they begin to die slowly. They then use one of their sonar waves or something, and our MC gets sent flying, and he uses auditory shield, thunder havoc, and a whole lightning bolt just comes out from the sky, and he beats the level 30 ghosts, obtaining a lot of good stuff. He says after becoming a ghost, they can't live or die, and they can't reincarnate, so it's very sad. And our MC says, a group of nonsense really dares to fight against me. He then spams the... <laughs> Guys, he then spams the lightning ability and yeah, he just reached level 18 just like that. We then see something come out from behind him though, it is a creepy green aura and he then gets surrounded in it. He then tries to run away but then he lands on the ground and... Wait, what just happened? Our MC is wearing a little suit and tie, and he seems to be in the middle of an office. He then says, Wait a second. But just at the second, somebody puts his hand on his shoulder, saying the general manager is looking for you. And so he goes into her place. We then see it is a lady with white hair and red eyes, and they are pretty much discussing a lot of things. And then we see the next scenario is our MC in a literal club jinking. And he says something is definitely missing, and and what is this plot twist? Anyway, we then see him floating in the ocean in a sort of golden ball, and the undead are all about to eat him and pounce on him. And we see our little phoenix trying to wake the master up. Our MC wakes up and he is in the middle of a pedestrian lane, and this- wait, what the heck? This girl has this dude on a leash, eh, what's going on? Anyway, our MC says something feels off, and we see the reflection in the mirror is actually our MC in the real world. Everybody yells out, look at the sky, and they say, are aliens invading blue star he says this is like deja vu and it's actually the people from the kang tribe they then begin to destroy the place and our mc runs he says what's going on he says how could i defeat them he then is about to get hit but then he gets an image of of course our little phoenix in their sky and her illusion i'm guessing she says save me and our mc says don't die as he has a sword out in his hand and he cuts away the attacks we then see him as he's looking out on the distance back on a building he says this is my home and he starts to realize that this is definitely a facade what the heck we then see a sniper right here come out of nowhere and it is aiming at our boy and kaboom it pierces through the glass and we see the fbi team walk in with all their artillery he says i'm a suspect huh but oh my gosh our mc finally realizes what this truly is he releases his shadow tentacles things and yeah he defeats all of these evil soldiers i'm guessing of course he says i can block bullets with my own body and speaking of body we now see our mc has red laser sights red laser beams all over his face his body his torso his legs everywhere but he uses his gundam wings and he flies into the air and wait that was actually rhyming anyway our mc crushes these tanks with absolute ease kaboom 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 he literally rips it up apart and he uses ice storm and we see all of the ice arrows come onto the land and they're all yelling like no but our MC says, this hallucination is really falling apart, and I can break out of this place pretty soon. We then see some fighter jets, obviously they're dropping missiles, and they even blow up a building, and this scene looks kind of familiar, and anyway, our MC goes up to this plane, and this guy says, no, initiate attack. But our MC is way too strong for this, he uses a thunder from the sky. Our MC just really has the ability of thunder now, like he can definitely just call it, but anyway, he then boom boom boom, we see everything is falling apart, and our MC says, this hallucination is about to disappear, and too bad, he definitely wanted to see more powerful nuclear weapons. We then see our MC wakes up, and he has little one in his hand saying, thank you, leave the rest to me. We then see the undead gathering around him, and our MC is spiraling some of his mana, and and he uses a underwater tornado and they're all being sucked in and our MC also has a spirit ball I like where this is going and he says it's your turn now but then we see a lady with purple hair and it seems like she is quite fascinated we then see the ball and it literally destroys this alligator and this lady says as expected of a person who is able to break out of the ghost hallucination this is a mutated dark missionary she is ever a rank and she is level 35 she says she was once a dark missionary working for the main judicator but i don't think we want to hear this girl talk anyway our mc then begins to load up some more spikes from the water and it goes to to attack her. She manages to dodge a bit and she says you really are caught up on this. But her MC 
appears right in front of her, but he gets sent flying to a rock, but he manages to catch her with his tentacles. Hold on. Anyway, we then see he literally slaps this girl, and she says, I'ma die. And so she jumps up, and no, nope, that's not gonna work, and stab, stab, we see the swords go right through her body. Her MC says, your hallucination is interesting, but you aren't interesting. And oh gosh, well, if she didn't die from swords, she'd probably die from embarrassment. Our MC then gains 1 million energy points as well as 15 prestige points, and her MC is definitely going to rank up even further. Our MC yells out that he wants to become somebody OP and... Don't worry bro, you're definitely on that path, and we see crystals coming out of the ground, and we also see that there is a sunset. Oh gosh, he walks into this place and there seems to be a yin yang symbol, he says that the aura is the same as a mutated dark missionary, so this should have been her house. He then pops a pill in his hand, but he sees something that I don't think he should be happy with. He then looks around and oh gosh, it seems like all of them are failed pills, and all of them have no effects, so it's pretty much useless to have this. Our MC then says, hold on, wait a second. He then uses the extraction skill and he is super happy with his eyes turning into stars because he extracted all the impurities. He then takes it and he says this right, look at his position right here. It's like he won a great war, but anyway, he's super happy and yes, he's going to definitely distribute it among his villagers. He then begins to meditate and we see that he completes two missions simultaneously without even knowing and he also received a super swiftness card and a protective cover. Oh wow, this is definitely going to be helpful. He says these rewards for an S rank mission are so luxurious, and he gets a spitting image of the people who attacked his villagers just in case, and he says if they want to come to exceeding moon village, then they can only come by foot. He then has an image of his villagers literally taunting them in front of a barrier, but he also receives another card. This is the ability merge limit. Our MC is kind of confused what this is, but the system explains it is an item with high authority and special effects. And she says, for example, as we see a T-Rex going up against the system, and then it combines a braised intestines and brown sauce. What's going on? Anyway, we then see her holding a piece of poop. I'm just kidding, guys, but... I think it is poop, but let's not tell anyone that. And of course, the T-Rex, oh my gosh, guys, the T-Rex just dies. But our MC says, yeah, yeah, what a cool ability. We then see he is on the FaceTime, or, you know, he's on the hologram call with the lady that he saved. And she says, I have a new talent, which is a departmental time area. And my grandpa said it would be very useful. So our MC makes a teleportation circle in the room he is in. And then our lady starts to get kind of worried because she gets a flashback of when the grandpa said if you can become a concubine of our mc that would still be a great thing and oh my gosh this master is thinking too far she's getting kind of nervous because she wonders if the mc will like her but then her mc calls out to her and she is startled and he says use a teleportation array to teleport to me and she teleports to her mc and she is so happy to see him she then holds his hand and oh my gosh this elf lady really is beautiful and they teleport into his inventory space we see a lot of gold and we even see his phoenix sleeping and he says you can use a safe place now and you can use this area to use your ability she uses her ability and we see a lot of watches here clocks here suddenly come out in the universe and we even see a ticking one here that is really huge and the area construction is now complete he then says good work i'm going to start training so you can eat these pills to increase your strength as well she is then here on the ground looking at these pills and i'm pretty sure she finds this helpful she says she's very willing to stay by master's side however she she doesn't want to carry any kind of goal as she's literally labeling all of these bottles or wait what is the name test tubes man cylinders man i'm not that good at math or science man whatever anyway we then see her mc and he suddenly extracts all of the impurities from this fruit and we find out he is level 18 with a combat power of 380 but he says that that is not enough his job is an alchemist and this job requires a wood type talent and it consumes 20,000 donation points let's go our boy finally learns the beginner level alchemy and we see it right here his job is an alchemist and his alchemy level is only that of a beginner we see that his herb familiarity is at beginner rank as well as his flame manipulation he then begins to calculate the amount of times it will take to become an intermediate alchemist but of course our boy is definitely not that good at math and um 
he's just like me. Anyway, he gets a flashback of the dude from the Kang tribe. He says the Kang tribe army will plow your village to the ground. He then uses the ability merge limit as he grabs the card and is successfully used. And so he begins to wait. We see a slot machine right here and he is combining the shadow clone as well as a dark mist and something eerie begins to happen. We find out master of the shadows. Oh my gosh, this is now his ability. And look at this, this looks absolutely sick. The card of it, it is an ability, the quality X. And the ability is to create two clones, which even inherits the ability and power of the users. And wow, that is absolutely crazy. He says this ability for comedy because of course, well, it automatically plays Love River as the background music. And oh gosh, our boy really thinks he is in an edit. Anyway, we then see the Shadow Tentacles go ahead and try his ability. Then he purchases a rank 1 furnace. We see he activates the Master of the Shadows ability and we see the notes right here. Oh my gosh. And he begins to craft it and there's a really loving atmosphere in the area. Of course, even the tribes girls is like, wait, there's three masters? Anyway, they begin to alchemize. Yes, guys, that is a word. And pretty much we find out that he failed to make a chi blood pill, sadly. Anyway, the clone failed as well and everybody's just failing. Oh gosh, this is not going to be good. MC says though, actually he can get three times the speed. And yes, he only needs five hours to reach the intermediate level. We then see this is the nine clans of Kang tribe on the Earth clan, and there seems to be a lot of them gathered right here. Of course, they then begin to discuss around each other, saying the clan leader is a terror rank expert. If we are unable to beat him, how strong is that person? We get an image here of the first heaven, second heaven, and the third heaven, and the one below that is the fourth heaven. After you pass that level, of course the holy martial test as well, one can be considered a true Terra rank expert. The leader is right here with his hands behind his back and he says Feng Shi, how are the people doing? He replies, tribe leader, all nine clans have gathered and there is a total of 3,100 people. And they say, come on guys, the sun has risen. They then begin to sit on their podiums and they look at these magic crystals in their hands. And they mention that the rewards for killing the challengers were really good. And so they're definitely going to do their best. However, we get notifications saying, warning, error, teleportation failed. The tribe leader says, what the heck? Why is this not working? But then it seems like it was actually cut off. Our MC, however, is cutting a different type of thing as we see a monster right here, a winged wolf, and he instantly defeats it. We find out that passing Defending Beast Challenge, you may now enter the second layer of heaven. He says after a whole night of using and alchemizing pills, he was finally able to max out his stats. We then see, of course, it is a tribal girl right here. Oh my gosh, she is literally doing so much things at once. And she might even be more talented than her MC in using the system. Anyway, our MC arrives at the location and we then see the pink haired dude again saying what does that mean because it says the system number of challengers requirement has been met the system explains are you guys supposed to get mad at a precious myriad stone and he says you can get them from others using pvp and everybody is quite shocked by this and i think our mc might have to beat everyone up the system then explains that everybody gets three stones for free and every time you win a game you will get all of the opponent's stones our mc says he needs 16 stones if the opponent only has three then he needs to play at least five games the guy with pink here then puts it up in the air and he says he doesn't want to participate and can I just take these three myriad stones and walk away? The system says, yes, you can, but you will die. And look at this guy's expression. It completely did a 180. He says at that moment before I could react, it felt like countless knives were literally piercing his body. And that's why you never mess with the system, guys. Anyway, the system says, please confirm your participation. And everybody is deciding whether yes or no. The majority all click yes. And of course, the personal data is on our MC. His reputation is 140. He is a level 18 and also a level 8 judge. We find out that he, they will match him equally with his opponents, which is Harry from District 33, Retta, Fotia, and of course Alice. We then see a bright, colorful glass here. It's very nice. It reminds me of the ones, the panels, or the panes that you see in church. And it seems our MC is going up against a competitor. The system says, Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, oh gosh, ladies and gentlemen, let the competition begin. 
We find out that on the left is Harry from the Vacu Star Realm, and of course, on the right is our MC Chin Fang from the Blue Star Realm. The people in the audience are all cheering, and they don't even know who the heck they are. Anyway, everybody begins to place bets, and he says these people, but the system says, stop betting. In the Myriad battle, there are no restrictions and no rules. That means the winner is king. Start now and our MC instantly right in front of him is the opponent and he manages to block the attack with his arm and our MC says the impact of that punch was 30 tons and so this dude is definitely nothing to mess with. Oh my gosh, his opponent straight up brings out some rocket launchers on his shoulders. Is this Spider-Man or no, Iron Man or something? But our MC slashes it in half and the system says, what the heck, he disappeared? But oh no no, our MC manages to block the attacks once more and yes, he manages to even cut his arm. He then pulls it out right off the socket but this guy is straight up Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man and he sends out a claw but our MC just breaks it again. Our MC must really hate technology. Anyway, we see even more and this guy is Genos now. He sends out all of his arms and his materials and his weapons and oh my gosh, this might be difficult for our MC. Our MC literally gets trapped. Of course, the claws are on his legs and on his arms and it seems like there is no hope. Our MC says, you are a strong enemy but he literally rips off the arms from his arms and that was kind of funny. But anyway, he then literally uses his hellfire right behind him and kaboom. Oh my gosh. This guy says our, to our MC, of course, since my S level talent awakening, this guy is way too strong and I've never met anyone like him. We then see our MC's tentacle grab onto the dude and it literally launches him up into the air and crashes him onto the ground. He then spins him up and our MC says it's over and he slices him in the head and he spits out blood and he drops to the floor. Of course, our MC says it looks like he can't move anymore and then the system asks Harry if he is ready to of course continue. But it seems like the atmosphere changed because everybody in the audience, well, they didn't expect this. And so Harry from District 33 has admitted defeat and the winner is our MC but oh my gosh it seems like the restriction has been lifted it says please place your bet and the winner will collect his prizes himself and right oh no guys we see that his opponent Harry is literally getting eaten alive by these undead creatures of the abyss or something and this is definitely sad but our MC just sets down and watches. He says you deliberately didn't say the consequences of losing and the system says yeah, in this killing world it's not a game, it is a battle of life and death. And of course, it seems like our MC gets to receive the stones of Harry. The system then celebrates because our boy Chin Fang has decided to continue in this battle. And oh my gosh, something begins to happen. And the one selected was Sal from the Tenzing clan as we see a pink light suddenly select him. It says, please choose your body. And he says it's been a thousand years now and he has finally arrived at this opportunity. We find out that his whole family was literally murdered. This is so sad. And of course, because of this, he wanted to get revenge. But unfortunately, he failed. And it seems like the one who beat him is a white haired dude or maybe girl, we never know. And he's using a sort of sword. He says it's you because of course, the one who beat him in the tournament was the murderer from before. And the dude from Tenzing clan begins to get eaten by these undead. And we hear confirm the body. And the system is kind of shocked because the dude from the Tenzing clan has selected a Voga. Oh she became a literal predator. He literally chose to become a demon monster alien thing right here and this doesn't look good. He then goes to clash at our MC and the game begins and unfortunately, well our MC might be at a disadvantage. They then begin to go back and forth and our MC is right here as he's kind of worried and slash 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 the dude then says this is my ability. He lets out a roar and we find out that its blood is extremely flammable and if it comes in contact with something, it will literally explode. And so he makes his blood go towards our MC and this kind of looks like boba but um, I guess I'm just hungry or thirsty for it. Ah, I don't even know the term. Anyway, our MC manages to of course evade it but we see the explosions on the ground but oh no, Sal manages to hit him and our MC is filled with it and he takes a lot of damage. He is about to get crushed and pounced on and he is literally trying to fight for his life as he is under the beast but he uses Dark Knight's sword and from above him oh my gosh 
it seems like of course, it deflected his sword. Our MC yells saying that's my strongest ability, but oh gosh he uses Hellfire, and it seems he has access to Sal's memories. He then begins to go through, and he says are you showing this to make me sympathize you or something? And we see Sal right here crying on his knees. And this is so sad, and our MC says your experience is indeed pitiable, however I need to rescue my combats. And yes, Sal from the Tenzing clan or this alien is finally dead, and our MC says I'll kill your enemy, so go get rest, and of course he dissipates away. We find out that the soul power has been depleted, and Sal can no longer resurrect, and rest in peace to Sal, but I know our MC will definitely avenge him and his family. The chapter starts, and of course, Chin Feng gets notified by the system, and the system says, as a reward, please keep these six myriad stones. Of course, the system says, I'm quite interested though, your last move against Sal was obviously an ordinary thunderstorm, and how did it break through his defense? Our MC says he used a little trick as he goes to get the sword from the bottom, he tells the system that pretty much when he uses his thunder to a certain extent, well, he can use all the thunder in the area. And so, of course, even blood is flammable, so that's how Wow, the blood splattered everywhere and the explosion got greater. The system says this guy and I think the system just broke character. Of course he has such a terrifying methods of killing and eliminating his enemies so he wonders how our MC is from the lower thousand realms. Our MC says, I choose to continue. And so, of course, the system has his party hats and his confetti, or whatever this is called, the thing you blow up at a. Okay, not blow up. But anyway, he says, Let's go. Our boy chooses to continue. The spectators all say, Who would want to fight this guy? He's absolutely terrifying. They mention, Engaging in battle is pretty much an expected loss. The system says, What's going on here? And the system informs the MC that there is no opponent, and so he can't continue the competition. But then the system suddenly starts to get jammed. Our MC is kind of confused, and we see some lady walking into this huge, very advanced sort of door. We hear a lady say, oh dear, that's annoying. She says, you're still a good looking kid. And oh my gosh, this lady looks like a person from Fire Force, the evangelists. And of course, this lady is named Sasha, and this looks like a very advanced sort of robot cyborg, like kind of like Lucy from Cyberpunk, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, the name of that person laying down was a heavenly punisher, and she says, I'm here to relieve your worries. Sasha says, I don't know what you're talking about. She says, your game cannot continue. And I have a suggestion. It says that the Heavenly Punisher has no right to interfere in the affairs of the world during this assessment period as we see an image of Chin Feng literally in the hologram above them. The Heavenly Punisher then begins to twirl with Sasha's hair which is kinda sus and she says, and she gets of course an expression change, in the world of carnage, with all opportunities there are an equal amount of risks that follow. And so she says take my words to him and I believe he will make the right choice and I don't know why this Heavenly Punisher literally has a girl on top of her like just on her back. Anyway, the lady says behind her, by the way, I have never seen you interfering in the affairs of the greater world. What exactly happened? And she says as there is an image of our boy right in front of her, this dude reminds me of an old friend and her MC probably reminds her of the strongest dude to ever exist. And I just realized that that system was Sasha, so this is going to be very interesting. We find out that all spectators, spectators will receive the same set of bodies and will enter the holy ruins for one hour hunting game within Chin Feng from Area 1. The spectators are the hunter and Chin Feng is the prey, and what the heck, this seems very unfair. We find out that if the prey can eliminate all of the hunters, the role reversal will give you 500,000 attribute points, that is absolutely insane. And the system says, if you want to continue, you can, but if you don't want to, it's alright and the game will come to an end. Our MC then of course cracks his knuckles saying, let the games begin, and I'm just getting kind of bored. We see our MC walking along this broken buildings outside, and we see these skeletons and these people go to attack our MC. He uses this charging energy, and of course they get sent flying away. He mentions they only have 200 stars of combat power and well you know they're just ultimately weak but just at that moment he tries to extract them but a sort of ray tries to hit her MC but he puts up his force field. We then see a dude begin to shoot his gun into the air and he has an AK-47 or I don't know what the gun that is and it begins to set off fireworks or something and her MC just looks at him with blood smeared across his face. Everybody, I'm guessing they are wearing masks, they say he's over there and they go to chase our MC. Of course they are even flying and they have a big axes and all these cool, they even have a mace. They mentioned that Heaven's Thou would never allow such an unfair game. 
and they mentioned to themselves that he must be stronger than he showed in the dual field and there are literally like 50 of them going to attack our MC. They then look up and they are kind of mad because our MC is charging up the thunderstorm in the cloud and he says I've been waiting for a long time and oh my god. Oh my gosh, guys, there's like 50 of them on the ground just looking up very clueless. And well, rest in peace to those guys, and there is a huge explosion. The other people go ahead and start to chase him once more, but this guy mentions and it seems he's pretty smart. He says, is that a clone skill? Let me use my insightful eye to check. He finds out that the race is small thousand, world's human of talent, and the combat power is 420. And he says that the inside eye did not indicate that it is a clone, so it seems like it's the real person. He then gets startled because the body disappeared, and they then begin to blame each other saying, how did you really let him run away? Come on, let's go and find them. This other guy suggests, did you hear any strange noises out here? But of course, the guy mentions, tell me more about this. He says, well, it kind of sounded like singing. And yes, he says the lyrics. <laughs> he says the lyrics are, I once walked through the legendary love river with you, but it has been submerged in my tears and turned into a painful river of love. And yo, duh, those are the lyrics that happen when our MC uses his clones. This guy is singing and the people are like, what the heck, has this guy gone crazy or something? But we then hear a counter, 51, 52, 53, and our MC is just looking at them from atop, and oh gosh, this isn't gonna end well. We see his clones right beside him, and he begins to of course harness up his five elements, metal, earth, and thunder, and yeah, we hear the background music playing. I'm just gonna call them the red hooded dudes, but anyway, these red hooded skeleton dudes look behind them, and they suddenly fall to the ground. They wonder what the heck is going on, and they if it's an earthquake. This guy stabs his dagger into the sand and he says no way we fall into a trap but then somebody kicks on him and he gets sent flying down. They all begin to fall and yeah this isn't ending well however spikes come out and they manage to land on it and this guy begins to ponder saying this dude really has way too many talents. He suddenly gets shocked of course because the rod that he hanged onto that our MC put there well, uh, he actually uses thunder and lightning to of course conduct it and they all get affected by it. But this one dude is still standing as he has put up a barrier and shout out to this guy, he's pretty talented. Anyway, he's at the top now and he hit the top of the cliff. He says I can finally make it out, but then we see a cage of the metal and of course, yeah, the metal spikes and it crashes down and all those dudes are definitely gone. Our MC explains that he simply used earth elemental ability to remove the soil and then he placed metal spikes there and of course a thunder element inside that hole. After that, he just needed to wait for the hunters to enter the field and activate the master of the shadows ability and well, that's exactly how they fell into his trap. Our MC gives a look and it seems like he is serious now and of course he's planning for the next step. He then looks at his clones on the other buildings and well, the clone leads the hunters into a narrow terrain and so he's gonna wait for them to enter the trap range. And yup, they walk right into his trap as they are now surrounded by our boy's hell flames and they are all surrounded. He then weakens the buildings and it begins to collapse on them and this guy is literally under the rubble and we see even spikes going for this other one and whoop, yep, they are all getting wrecked. Our MC then uses more hell flame and we even uses magma and so everything begins to fall on these people and yep, they're getting severely injured and they're even falling into the lava like I do with Minecraft every time I enter the nether. He then begins to chase them down again and he even uses his spikes once more and he says the game ended perfectly. However, right behind him was the lady in that room talking to the system and the system says what? And of course, it did not expect this. She says you are not allowed here but the heavenly punisher just absolutely ignores Sasha and she says hello Chin Feng and her MC just says like bro, who the heck are you? She she explains as she folds her arms, she seems kind of pissed. She mentions, I'm the person who put 500,000 attribute values in the gambling game. And her MC says, thank you so much. She says, that's not necessary, I don't mean that. She explains that Heaven's Dao has regulations that of course the Punisher cannot interfere with the Challenger. However, there is an exception in the Holy Ruin where our boy voluntarily entered and he is not monitored by the Heavenly Dao. He then says, so this game was just to lure me out and the attributes are fake, but the lady says, no, that's not exactly the case. Our MC says he doesn't like to talk to pedantic people and hold on guys, let me search up what that means, alright? And the definition is pretty much somebody who cares and pays too much attention to small details. Of course, the Heavenly Punisher says that's not a big deal and she goes to punch our MC. And her MC gets flying as he activates his armor and oh my gosh, our boy is getting wrecked. 
He then receives another punishing blow of fireballs, and the Heavenly Punisher says, that punch was too weak to do me any harm, and she punches him more, and he even coughs out blood. He then kicks, but he misses, and then the Heavenly Punisher says, you have too many flaws as she literally throws him down on the ground, like he is some sort of ragdoll. Our MC is absolutely getting wrecked, he says her speed is too fast, and I can't concentrate on releasing any of my skills. She throws him up into the air, and then she teleports right there like she's using a combo, and she says that she will torture him to death. And I just want to know what exactly our boy did to deserve this. He is then in the air, but he uses his wings, and then he begins to use his five elements talent, Earth and Metal. We see actually five of the elements now go towards the lady, and we see five huge explosions. Our MC says that strength was definitely as strong as a nuclear bomb. He hopes that it was useful and he scouts from above, and she's not even damaged. She says really, it only made my armor dirty. Our MC says really, the five elemental talents have no effect, and so he brings out our cute little phoenix. She looks very determined and angry at that heavenly punisher, and our MC tells her to use golden flame. She then begins to go towards the enemy, and she is like a fireball from the sky, a meteor, but then she has a look of utter despair on her face. She gets grabbed by the heavenly punisher, and then she says, dragon ancestor, I became a lowly heavenly punisher because of that incident. She says everybody laughed at me, and so, the Heavenly Punisher says, I will eliminate you again. Our MC yells out and uses Thunder Havoc as he is above her, and she doesn't notice it, and it seems like Luan managed to escape. Luan says that I'm so scared, but our MC mentions, maybe the elemental talents can't hurt her, but I know what will. He then uses the earth and we see like quicksand begin to form under her. He then sets it on fire and the lady says, that's all? Are you gonna use the same skills you use on those 200 losers? But our MC uses an ice storm above him and oh my gosh, she seems to be kind of shocked. Ah, uh, just kidding. She says I am invincible. She got way too cocky and she lets out a magma to of course counteract our enemies or our boys attack. And she says, you wanna try again? And our MC uses another ice storm and freezes her. He then of course, course brings out his fist the most important weapon he mentions it's now time to beat you up he punches her and he continues to do so but then he punches her helmet and her helmet actually sends him flying wow i didn't know that this girl's special ability is probably headbutting anyway our mc is literally thrown so far into this rock and it gets destroyed and he says this is absolutely absurd and ridiculous and she mentions you really try to trap me with solidified magma yep i am way beyond all of this of course she breaks out of it and then we see a floating oh my gosh she just took out a crater from the ground and this looks like an absolute meatball actually and yeah i don't think her mc is going to be able to survive this anyway she says i really do like your expression and it's time for me to show you my power she then sends it flying and it even has a barrier around it just from the sheer speed and her mc is regenerating his hp and we see that the entire rock behind him is covered in blood i didn't even know that it was blood he says his vitality is low which is causing the healing speed of miracle healing arts to absolutely slow down our mc looks very desperate here and in his eyes is absolute fear and we then see the big meatball <laughs> We then see the big meatball hit him, and oh my gosh, the Heavenly Punisher is still flowing and flying, and she looks like she's really the MC. But anyway, she wonders something. She says, a spiritual pet with dual talents of fire and space. Very interesting, and it seems like her MC survived. She then goes and punches him right in the solar plexus or something, just in the stomach pretty much. And anyway, our MC mentions that in the moment the boulder fell, Shao Luan saved him. And so he tries to heal Shao Luan, and right above her is... Is the heavenly punisher and she is about to literally crush our mc he manages to dodge and she says i thought this would be more intense and as he tries to run away she literally does like a backstroke in the air she says how fast can you really run she then picks up a big boulder a big piece of rubble and this reminds me of of course tank top from one punch man but anyway our mc runs super fast as he steps on the ground and he says with a look of utter anger in his face that in order to save him shao luan use teleportation he says the impact of the boulder literally shattered her heart and lungs no our little phoenix and if he doesn't find a safe place for treatment well they will both die unfortunately right behind him is of course the heavenly punisher and well we see these flying rasengans right above him 
And at least these are actually his. And the Heavenly Punisher says, come on, let's do this again. Anyway, we see the Rasengan's literally turned into Shenron, these two twin dragons. But then the Heavenly Punisher says, your counterattack will make your death even more ugly. And it's better to just give up. But we all know that's not what our MC is going to do. Of course, our MC managed to get caught by the Heavenly Punisher. And she is about to punch him. But of course, she misses. Just kidding. It was actually a clone of our MC. Oh, wait, I, I was wrong as well, guys. It just, well, I thought it was a clone, but his arm is literally ripped off. And of course, she then begins to walk towards him. Our MC still manages to stand, stand and double you guys. This guy really has a strong demeanor. And anyway, he gets punched and they actually exchange blows right here. And our MC explains as he is healing Shaolin that the electromagnetic gun earlier was not an attack. It was actually to cover up for the background music from the Master of the Shadows. And yeah, I would definitely would not want to hear that music. He explains that he pretty much confused the Heavenly Punisher to of course take Shao Luan as he is, she is in his palm and he needed to heal her. He says use this quickly to restore your vitality and Shao Luan took this potion. They both actually take it and he says the clone was killed and oh I guess I was right the one above was actually a clone. He then teleports back to the ground level right above the Heavenly Punisher. They go blow for blow but the Heavenly Punisher still says you really just can't touch me. Our MC is right behind her and he's about to punch and kaboom but unfortunately it seemed like the only thing he managed to get off was the helmet but that's actually good we then see her eyes right here and those do not look normal he says that isn't my weak point and her eyes literally look like a fan or something and everybody if anybody had this in real life i don't know but i would definitely be scared let me know what you guys think our mc gets scared as he leaps back as well and she then steps on him and then she sends him flying right through a window our mc says that he felt like some sort of spirit was torn from his body he says it's different than the cry of the ghost at exceeding moon village and it felt like he was being torn apart he then looks up and oh my gosh of course it's a heavenly punisher and shaluan is literally just on top of his shoulder like oh crap anyway she then says to our MC, I enjoy the feeling of defeating an opponent with my own hands, and she explains that your body already experienced it, so I should tell you that her eyes contain a demonic power, and the person they lock onto must stop all of their actions. If the person tries to move, the body and spirit will experience the pain of being torn apart in a moment, and that's what our MC felt. She says, It's like putting up a camera, and the moment you are taking a picture, everything must stop. If things are moving, then the pictures will begin to blur, and her MC says, So that's why her camera, eyes, or sorry, that's where her eyes look like a camera, and it really does make sense. He then tells Shao Luan, and she is literally hiding on his shoulder, that they must both look for her weakness, but then she uses her demonic photogenic or photographic eye once more, and she smiles, but her MC is right behind her at her blind spot, but then she does a 180 and punches him right through a building, and he coughs out even more blood, and his eyes aren't even drawn here because it got done in. And of course, Shao Luan says, Master, no. But her MC says as he falls down, 100 meters. 100 meters is still inside the skill range. She is about to step on her MC and we see the explosion. He goes 200 meters, 500 all the way to 3000 meters. And the lady says, to be able to endure having your spirit torn apart, you are definitely a person with strong pain tolerance. She says, I want you to push to your limits. And we see our MC is at 20,000 meters. And well, he doesn't get the tearing feeling. He says that where he is now should be the area limit of the ability. And whenever he, the heavenly Punisher uses the ability, teleport to 20,000 meters away. Demonic photographic eye, the heavenly Punisher uses it once again. And our MC teleports 20,000 meters back where he got wrecked. And he says, my predicament, or sorry, my prediction was correct. 20,000 meters is the limit. And if he is 20,000 meters away, her skills become ineffective. He tells Shao Luan to find a counterattack, but just at that second, we hear magic eye of the reality. She then gets kind of pissed as she turns around, but her MC punches her right in the gut, and it seems like she begins to get beat up. And Shao Luan mentions, this is the edge of the holy ruins, and you can no longer move forward or outward. She then begins to punch her MC, and she launches like five right here. She really thinks she's Saitama. This is called the Imperial Fist, and they are surrounded with these very beautiful golden aura and her mc says shallow one teleport 
and of course they teleport right away. But then something suddenly happens and he gets punched by the attacks and we find out that Shallow One mentions that her ability did not work. He says Shallow One's movement relies on a certain node in the locked space to make a space jump. However, the fist of the Heavenly Punisher distorted the space, and so she can't find the accurate node. His armor then begins to break, and of course it is about to be destroyed. He says, Shallow One, listen to me. He says he has a way to get out of here and he has a way to beat her, and of course he's getting barraged by the attacks right behind him, and he says, just do what I say. And Shallow One jumps away from her MC and towards the Heavenly Punisher. The Heavenly Punisher then says, what, are you out of ideas? But then we see a huge explosion happen, and oh gosh, Halloween definitely is pretty smart. The Heavenly Punisher is kind of pissed off, and she says, you will all die. And she launches even more punches, however, she doesn't know where it's going. Our MC says, first of all, he needs to reduce and of course avoid the fists, and he can reach the Heavenly Punisher. After that, of course, he will increase the brightness of the burning golden flame, and by losing her vision, her fists can no longer burn block the space. He's about to punch her as she puts her hand off of her face and we see that one of her eyes is closed and we see them both punch each other and oh gosh our MC's arm is literally twirled but then we then see something come out of inside of her. Yes it is our MC's shadow ability and she is stuck right here. She says oh gosh is this all the ability you have and she sends our MC flying and she rips apart the tentacles that are on her body. We then see that her armor is suddenly taken away and she explains that each piece of armor actually weighs down her body by 10 tons and oh gosh this isn't a good thing and so now she gives a look of utter cockiness saying I can barely contain my destructive power and let me show you how strong I am. He calls out to Shao Luan but then he gets punched uppercutted right in the chin and he gets punched right through the air he's literally getting handled right now but then he manages to dodge one and he takes that time to tell Shao Luan to return to his inventory space. Of course she says no I can continue but of course it is too late for our MC as we see the Heavenly Punisher right in front of him. She then punches him up to the sky and she says without the ridiculous teleportation, how else would you escape from my grasp? Of course her MC is falling down and I'm afraid that this might be the end. The chapter starts and our MC is falling from the sky and he's ready to get the lady's piece of armor pretty much. He says shadow restriction lifted and of course it is super heavy but they managed to do so and before he can do that the heavenly punisher is right in front of him. Of course his shadow then throws the golden plate towards him and he uses it to of course not take damage from the punch. Nonetheless he gets sent flying down and it still did good damage and he mentions it's so hard to resist her power even with her own armor and if he hides in the zero dimensional space well she will still be able to find it. We then hear wait master and oh my gosh it is a caveman cutie and of course she uses time manipulation and so the heavenly punisher sends something flying towards her barrier and she mentions how can this happen? She obviously adjusted the time flow but there is no way to escape. Kaboom, the Heavenly Punisher mentions, power controlling time is quite powerful, but it's a pity that her level is way too low. We then see our MC got damaged, and the caveman lady says, I'm so sorry, it was because of me that I wasn't able to help you. Our MC still mentions that she mistakenly thought that I am the dragon ancestor, and that might be related to his awakened bloodline talent. Our MC says hold her back as of course he summons a shadow clone and he's really injured here with blood coming down from his hands. He says just buy me one minute and make sure to prioritize your safety. The Heavenly Punisher begins to walk towards them but our MC says I'll make a huge explosion and you go on out of here. We then see the huge explosion and they go past her right here and we see the caveman girl go even further and her MC is literally sitting by some stairs as he's trying to heal himself. We then see a time stasis up in the air oh my gosh this looks really cool and her MC is literally chomping down on the chomping down on these dragon fruit energy things and we see the heavenly Punch and punisher go kick our MC's clone he then feels the damage though and oh gosh this is super frightening she then goes towards a caveman lady who actually has our MC's wings now and she kicks her but it seems like the shadow clone saved her and he gets sent flying to the ground instead Oh my gosh, it is no use because of course the Heavenly Punisher is right behind her and she says, I really finally caught my mouse. She then falls to the ground and the, winds, the wings are shattered but the Heavenly Punisher gets punched somehow and her MC begins to use wings of second form 
transformation, and it seems like the wings literally become a sort of rocket launcher on his forearm, and if she begins to wind her arm saying, what the heck, that's all, and she barely has any scratches. Our MC then powers up this rocket, and oh my gosh, hopefully this does damage, and he punches her, and she gets sent flying, and they even break a building's ceiling. Our MC says that is the power of the wing's second awakening. But oh my gosh, it is not enough as she sweeps our MC off of his feet. And we see him right here on the ground, and we find out that all of his ribs have been broken, and his vitality or his health have only recovered by only 50%. And we see the Heavenly Punisher here, and she is about to step on her MC, and yes, she doesn't even do that anymore. And she says, out of respect, I'll eliminate you with my fists. And of course, she loads up her punch, but the caveman lady stands in front of her, and she says, Master, I'm sorry, and her MC is terrified because she is going to sacrifice her own life. She then gets the fist right through her body and oh wow, this is so sad. She mentions in exchange for the master's life, please. And oh, our MC yells Chi Yui, the name of the caveman girl, very furiously. And we see a sort of yellow tornado come out of nowhere. The heavenly punisher says, my hard work paid off and the dragon soul finally got released. And oh my gosh, our MC is undergoing an Awakener, and oh wow guys, this isn't a reference to Dragon Ball, but we see our MC has powered up to Super Saiyan, and he definitely is pretty OP now. We then see a literal dragon right behind him, it is his aura, and the lady says the dragon's power is so terrifying, and she says it really reminds her of a person named Long Zhu, and it was in the past. And let me know guys if you would want to have a Super Saiyan ability like this. We then see they both begin to power up their punch, and she says, I will return to the divine realm and it seems like she's stuck on the realm here. We then see them go head to head, Shenron, the golden dragon versus the heavenly punisher and oh my gosh, her MC is about to punch her but then Sasha, the system lady, goes in front of her and she tells the heavenly punisher, contact the challenger privately with the intention to eliminate him and create holy ruins that are isolated from the search of the heavenly Tao. Oh, that was a long one. But anyway, she says of course that she will report all of these things. The heavenly punisher doesn't seem to look like she cares at all. She looks unbothered. She says, I have achieved my goal. And one of her eyes turns very deceptive and just absolutely creepy. She says, finally, once the newbie period is over, I will defeat Long Zhu's ascendant, and he won't be so fortunate next time. We then see something falling to the ground, and it is our MC, and he missed the lady, and oh, this is so sad. But unfortunately, we then see he is super worn out, and reverts back to his normal form. He is right here floating on the rubble as it is falling, and he is holding onto the caveman lady. And the lady says, the system, due to a mistake made by the Heavenly Dao, the village chief Chin Feng has been compensated by unlimited purchase rights of the Myriad Stones, but this won't be able to bring back a life. The system mentions, please, Heavenly Blade of Shinra, please receive it. This is a 7th level equipment, and yeah, this is absolutely OP stats. Make sure you guys pause it if you want to see it. They also have the spinning dragon pattern armor, but our MC doesn't seem to care as he is looking here very sad. He says, who is she? And the system says she is a demi deity who got demoted from the divine realm and she can't say anything more. Our MC says that he will remember this and one day he will make her pay for what she's done. Of course, our MC's girlfriend or I guess the girlfriend to be literally disappears right in front of him and he looks up to the sky and he says, how unfortunate. I really don't want to use a dead because he had an option to actually extract her and bring her back. We then get a notification that he has finally activated a universal transmission array, and of course, they are kind of shocked to see Chin Feng return to the village. Of course, they then look up and say, Oh my gosh, I've become a villager of the Dragon Abyss Village, and all of these people are quite happy. We find out that the population has reached 15,000, and they're about to hit level 3. We see congratulations to the Abyss Village in District 1. They took the lead in being promoted to level 3, and they have gotten 2,000 attribute points for Chin Feng and 1,000 points for the villagers. The MC says, one headquarters, 16 village branches, all the compatriots of the Dragon Kingdom were saved. And of course, it's time to use the attributes, and our MC has some very cool legendary armor, but his face definitely doesn't reflect the reflect that of happiness. He is a level 18, a level 8 judge, and look at all his attributes now, he really has come a long way. He has Dragon Might, Divine Sight, of course, Shadow Restriction, Celestial, all these other abilities, and yeah, it doesn't matter because our MC is just super sad that the caveman girl has disappeared. He arrives at the Taiyui town, and everybody is so happy, and they say, I'm falling in love with Chin Feng. 
Jin Feng then walks past them right here as they are celebrating, saying that they have to tell the news about Chi Yui's death, which is a caveman girl. We then see somebody come out of a magic circle, and it seems like the Kang tribe is going to attack them, and our MC is kind of shocked because the Chi Yun is actually there, who is a sister, or sorry, who is a brother of Chi Yui. He then dashes as fast as he can, and they are all like, what the heck, Boss Chin went so fast, and he left quite the mark. We then see them fighting on the battlefield or in the desert right here, and we hear Patriarch, Patriarch, why are you here? And he says, just learned that the Guardian forces are holding a meeting in the Yuan clan, but they didn't notify our clan. He says, you know what, send out all the troops and defeat all of them, leaving nobody behind. And they are then going to come in contact with Chi Yu leading, of course, our boy Chin Feng's clan. We then see them fight each other, and of course, Chi Yun is actually pretty capable as he defeats some, but then something goes to kick him, and yup, they just keep going back and forth and back and forth. Suddenly, they are immersed in quicksand, and it is a Kang clan skill, and they can use fire skills to actually deal with them. We then see one of them is, or some of them are literally getting choked by the sand snake or something, but then we hear boom, 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 and everybody's literally just fighting here guys and we even see a rampant monkey that is absolutely huge and this isn't going well. We then see some sort of pink tentacles and yes guys it is our boy Chin Feng. He has finally came and he starts to subdue and save as well his villagers in the sand or the quicksand. He then sends an ice spike and of course it defeats the person right behind his subordinate and he says Lei Jue where is Chi Yun? And he says Chi Yun has penetrated deep into the enemy while our MC is right here fighting this big giant lady. Lei Jue defeats them as well as he literally incinerates this guy and he said there are at least 3,000 enemies here and you are alone and we see the destruction on the battlefield and oh my gosh this is absolutely horrible. We then see I guess it is an elder trying to defeat our boy MC Chin Feng but he just freezes him up like that and well it's not going to end well for this guy. Of course he literally steps on another one and he says fly high in the sky to look for Chi Yun to Princess Luan. Of course, Luan then flies to find Chi Yun, and she mentions, Master, I found Chi Yun, and he says, send me there right now. And it seems like, of course, Chi Yun is struggling against these monsters. Our MC arrives to Chi Yun, and Chi Yun says, Master, I knew you would come to save us. And then, of course, he is really happy as he cheers, but all our MC can see is a spitting image of his sister who has passed away. He says, send my people back to Taiyu Town. And oh my gosh, they come crashing down back to the village, and it's up to our MC to go up against all of these monsters. We then see the village tribe leader here, and he says he is the head of the challenger village, and let's defeat this guy together. The chapter starts and all of these dudes are about to attack our MC. Fortunately, our MC says with his dragon right behind him and little Luan on his head, my people have all withdrawn and it's time to make a bigger move. And yeah, these guys are definitely done for. We then see the leader and he's like, what the heck, I can't even move my body. And even this huge monster with 600 combat stars is definitely trembling in front of his face. Our MC loads up his dragon attack and this is the dragon aura release. And well, it's coming for them and kaboom, we're gonna get wrecked. We see the elder here and he says I must use combined skills to defend but it doesn't matter and he literally gets burnt into a crisp as we see him right here. Furthermore the dragon launches even more attacks and they all get incinerated and we find out that he has finally defeated the Kang clan leader and the entire Kang clan and he drops a Kang clan deed card. He picks it up and well he has 267 guardians on earth and 348 sorry 3486 guardians have fell to his power. He also reaches is level 20 and the system is kind of surprised as well. He then returns to his village and everybody right there is like master please take this gift it is a fifth level sword and they are all happy and they are giving him all that they have. He says um all right then but in the distance he spots somebody under a tree. He then says to himself it seems like elder Chishan has noticed that Chi Yui has passed away. We then see some of the remaining Kang clan leaders and they're saying Sir, it's absolutely true. The challenger named Chin Feng used some sort of unknown skills to defeat all of our clans in one blow, and all of them are quite surprised by this. The name of this man is Yi Han, he is an expert at the first level of heaven, and he mentions if what he said is true, then he has already reached the first level of heaven, and he is talking about our boy Chin Feng. This bald guy, sorry dude, I didn't mean to roast you, his name is Fei Tian, and he says, no way, that is absolutely impossible. Nobody even from a great thousand worlds can be that strong. 
and this guy who looks sort of like a fox says, this is Chao Yun, he says, I think that person must be more than the first level. And they discussed, if the first level of heaven versus the ninth level on earth, even if it is a sure win situation, it will still take a lot of effort. And this guy comes to an epiphany, and he says, so that person has at, reached, has at least reached the third level of heaven. And of course, he gets sweaty and nervous, as he mentions, isn't the only person there you want? And we see, as he looks, there is somebody sitting on a throne. And this person, it seems to be Yuan. His name is Yuan Kong, and he gives a scary smirk, and a hope that our boy is definitely ready to get his butt whooped. The guy then leaves the room, and he says, you cowards are so scared because of a little challenger, and it seems like he has even a cute little, I don't know what that is, a monster on his shoulder, but let's hope that he's a tsundere. Just kidding, guys. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Anyway, they hear, Yuan clan never associates with weaker races, and the guy stops him, the one with fox ears, saying, it's normal for their clan to look down on us. Us. After all, there was something scary behind the Yuan clan, and I wonder what this is. We then see it is a Great Wall of China, just kidding, but yep, it's just a wall in the city of our boy, Chin Feng, and they are all celebrating. And our MC says, Elder Chishan, if it wasn't for me, she wouldn't have died. But the Elder says, don't worry, don't blame yourself. She died for a noble cause, and it is all in the past. And our MC says, I know that as well. But I also know that the leader or the elder would also be willing to die for me, and her MC seems kind of down. Of course, the elder then says, do you know the dragon master? And he says, wait, how can you know about that? He then hands him something, and this is the ancient ancestor divine record. We find out that the dragon ancestor of the dragon clan appeared in the form of a five-clawed golden dragon. And oh my gosh, this guy looks very intimidating and pretty majestic. Anyway, these are records of the deeds of the ancestral deities who traversed the universe tens of million years ago. As you see right here, here is one of the pages if you guys should want to read this. Our MC is reading through this and he is definitely quite shocked. We find out that the Heavenly Punisher was actually afraid of the resurrection of the Dragon An Ancestor for revenge, so she used his identity as a Heavenly Punisher to eliminate all the strong newcomers that will appear. The Elder tells him, Master, you are truly in trouble this time. And our MC shuts the book open, and he says in the Battle of the Holy Ruins, Yu, which is of course a Heavenly Punisher, her power was between 800 and 1000. And Sasha, Sasha the System reminds him that during the newbie assessment, of course, she didn't even use her power. Power. We find out that 2000 to 3000 stars combat power is the first level of heaven level, 3 to 4k is the second, 4 to 6k is the heaven of the third level, 6 to 9k is the fourth level, and 9000 to 15000 is the power of a fifth level heavenly being. So in other words, the heavenly punisher GU, her total attack skill would be around from 8 to 10,000. Anyway, he gets an image of her in his head, and she mentions that she is at least at the fourth level of the heaven level, and he says while well, he's sitting across from the elder at the fireplace what can i even do to survive this and he's right how exactly could he do this we then hear somebody knocking on the door furiously calling out for the leader he says a large number of enemy troops were discovered near the dragon abyss village and we see them right here and they are pushing towards them we all see them gathered here and they have a lot of beasts and the guy with a spear says oh crap this isn't looking well because he i bet he's pretty drunk and like his weapon's not going to do anything against that. We then see all of these warriors gathered up and the fox guy from earlier says, I am Xiao Yun. May I ask if the leader of the Dragon Abyss Village, Qin Feng, is here? And we see somebody sitting right here at the top of the highest wall, and the moon is right there. Oh my gosh, this guy is definitely the MC. And of course, Qin Feng says with his hands in his pocket, What do you want? The guy explains that he is there for revenge, and he mentions, I know you are strong, but you can't handle the 100,000 troops from behind me. Of course, the guy says, If the fight continues, both sides will suffer losses. And the MC says, Really? This dude really is a liar and is quite deceitful. Full. The guy says, I will send three men to compete against you one by one. If you win, then I'll give up my grudge and leave. Of course, this guy is very cocky as the people behind him or the guy behind him starts to smirk. And our MC says, it's a waste of time. Just send all of them here together. Of course, the guy says, really, you're quite very comfortable with this situation, I see. And he tells him to come out. We see a dude with an AK-47. We see a lady... I don't know what she's doing, but um, she just looks like she's a fighter or something. And we see a dude with some brass muscles, and they all charge at him together. Our MC jumps down, and they begin to start their power, and the lady uses her magic. And of course, they miss, and her MC steps on this guy, brass knuckles, and he gets... <laughs> He gets sent flying, that, wow, 
that's so sad. Anyway, the guy with the sniper rifle or the gun shoots at her MC, but her MC dodges it mid-air. And then he starts to get a, co a control of him using his tentacles. He then punches a dude with the brass knuckles, and the dude with the brass knuckles is literally damaged this time, and his brass knuckles are destroyed. And the lady with magic is sweating, saying, This dude is too strong. If I use a long-range attack, then of course I will be discovered. We get a flashback where they are discussing. The surviving Kang people have helped us with useful information. We know that Chin Feng has three skills. Oh gosh, look at these drawings of him. He has flying ability, five elements, and dragon. And blast. He explained that I have high hopes for you. And he says that I will promise to give you guys very good loot, as you see the three pills here that can double your combat power. They are then very determined to win this fight, but well, not everything goes as expected. And like Mike Tyson says, you have a plan till you get punched in the face. They begin to fight, of course, and the pill is taking effect. And we see that this guy has a clear shot on our MC, however, he disappears. And oh, well, this guy just gets stabbed in the eye. Thankfully, they definitely censored that out. The magician lady says, I'll hold him back. Use your shield. But her MC teleports right behind her. And yup, he uses his thunder. And this lady is definitely just begging for her life now. We then see it from the sky. And yup, GG to this lady. And of course, he even extracts the B rank 5 elemental talent. And their repeated talents are merging and evolving. The last guy is a person with the brass knuckles. And he yells out for the tribe leader to save him. However, it is over and her MC sends a flyer dragon punch towards him and the destruction is absolutely massive and this guy, his entire body is literally incinerated or at least the top part. The fox guy says, it's my turn, but her MC says, I knew the promise from before was just talk and our MC is ready for battle. They then begin to come at our MC, but our MC literally just uses his karate chops from Bruce Lee movies or I don't know what he's watching, but anyway, yup, they barely did any damage and he destroys all of them. The fox guy says, Thankfully, I have this one last card. It is a divine ability that can let an average person like him go against a genius, like our boy Chin Fang. This is actually an ability which is a rank 8. This is called Extracorporated Awareness. Our MC then is kind of shocked here, and we see a dust cloud form over our MC. But our MC is underneath his barrier, and he says, The only thing I can move is my head. Everything else is controlled by these warriors, or with these wires. The guy then orders them to attack now. How However, well, they're just keeping on getting wrecked, guys, and our MC just comes out of there, and he has a sword as he is pushing against the fox dude. He says, how the heck could you free me of my ability? And the MC says, are you an idiot, dude? Did you think I would tell you? He mentions that, of course, a few wires cannot compare to the demonic photographic eye of the heavenly punisher he faced, and it seems like it is over for this dude. He uses all of you go away attack, which is pretty much talk no jutsu, and he literally crushes the ground, and he goes past our our fox dude that we don't we definitely don't like this guy and he says once he enters the village both the sides would suffer great injuries however well he puts his sword towards the dude's neck and he says don't worry there are two people that are on the same level as me and they will take good care of your friends this guy says if i can escape and he runs past our mc away from him and our mc just wonders what is he doing why, why is he even trying to run away? I'm just going to get him anyway. And he uses Kamehameha, the Hellfire, and it seems like he has successfully killed the protected Celestial Rank. He then drops a good deed clan, and he uses Endless Extraction. And yes, it was successful, and he obtains his rank 8 ability. Our MC then says, what the heck? What is this weird wire skills? It, def it differs from person to person, and what exactly could that mean? He then uses it, and oh my gosh, he extracts everybody, mentioning that he can use Endless Extraction throughout the area. Our MC then says if that weak dude was strong enough to consume or to control dead corpses, that our MC may be even able to control enemies. <laughs> And then guys, we see Xiao Luan as she instructs the other people of the village, go ahead, hit them as hard as possible. Our MC is in dashing and he's, he literally hugs himself with the swords and he says, As expected of somebody like me, I'm definitely the protagonist. And let me know guys, would you ever do this if you were an MC? Suddenly, we then see water coming in and there is a huge flood I seems. And oh my gosh, it is Yuan, the dude from earlier. He is literally riding the wave and he has a smirk on his face. However, he's kind of confused, and we see the three people from earlier yelling out, Yuan Kong, 
weren't you unwilling to fight with us? And this guy says, children aren't allowed to listen to this because this dude is literally cussing so much. Of course, Yuan mentions, the strong never have to answer to the weak. And his little squid thing on his shoulder mentions, yes, I do agree. Our MC says his combat power is 1800 stars, and that isn't that much for mine, but why do I feel so scared of him? I'm guessing the Yuan guy definitely has some unspoken riz, just kidding guys. Anyway, he looks at his pet, and he says, could that be? Oh my gosh, I'm guessing that this is very strong. He finds out, we find out that this is actually one of the sea monsters, and they go to attack our MC, but he jumps and rides the wave as well, and he's about to crush these three monsters. He then slices, however, oh, well, they actually just get wrecked. But then he mentions, what the heck, he managed to block my attack, and it seems like Yuan is really strong. Yuan says, originally, I wanted to defeat you with ease, but you had to go and defeat three of my subordinates, so I won't let you get out of here unscathed. He said, go to hell in this abyss of pain as he launches up a whirlpool and we see a water monster go to attack our MC. But our MC is a king of dodging, guys. Let me know, guys. Would you guys, you, would you guys want to be good at dodging if you guys were in a manhwa? Because I definitely would. He dodges it with ease and then he says, I'm not the same me anymore. And of course, he uses the rank 8, rank eight ability, extracorporeal awareness. He says if physical attacks don't work, let's do this. And it seems like it does work in holding these monsters in the same place. Yuan says, what the heck, I can't get out of this. And her MC has literally become a puppet meister. And yeah, he's so strong now. He then makes it, he makes the, oh my gosh, he makes a snake into the shape of a piece of poop. And Yuan says, really, do you think you control me with such weak power? And the squid then begins to suck on Yuan. And it even goes to his face. And he says, this is the strength of a celestial rank. Our MC says, what the heck, emerging ability. And we see a huge tentacle of an octopus right here and oh my gosh it seems like this is the kraken and the kraken says to her mc do you have any last words but before the last words let me ask you why the heck would you become an ugly octopus that i'm about to eat for dinner Speaking of dinner, it is getting kind of late. Make sure to comment down the word dreams if you made it all the way here. And make sure you guys check out the other recaps if you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next recap.